right. How many do you have registered, uh, Michelle? Everyone who's here plus two. How many is that? And we have 20 images, right, Troy? Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever was, whatever was oh, in there. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I don't know what my iPad's doing. I just lost you. That's weird. Okay. Okay, and my husband decided to vacuum just now. So <laughs> <laughs> I am going to put we myself on mute and let you guys, let Troy take it away. Oh, my gosh. You're so funny. We couldn't even hear that. That's, that's great. Um, all right, I'm, I got I got two screens of, of images going here. So um, I have the library of images. And what I basically did was as I as I went through each image, and I did some tweaks to them, I, I made some adjustments, I'm, you know, cropping, dodging and burning color saturation, all those kind of things. Um, because I but I don't have context. So if I was a judge, these might be some things that I would say that that, that you could do to these to these images. Um, if these are your images that I'm playing with and you have questions or, you, you know, bring them up, like, let's, let's make this, let's make this a dialogue because honestly, <clears throat> this isn't, this isn't a one-sided thing. I mean, it's, you know, my opinion or, or, or my way of seeing it isn't, isn't the only way. Um, it's, it's one way. And I, I hope that that can give you some insight into how you might do things differently. So. Troy, With, yeah, are you going to maybe tell us also on images, um, maybe categories to be entered in as a, you know, if it were a question of it could go in a couple different areas? Um, yeah, definitely, you know, de definitely speak up while we're doing this, because if, if I get on a train of thought and I forget to mention those kind of things, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely happy to. Um, one of the things that, that and that's a really good point is category uh, when we really speak towards image competition is, you know, judges look at each category differently. And if you're not aware of how a judge looks at a category, it's really important to pay attention to that. And just real briefly, like in the portrait category, <clears throat> the judges expect that you have absolute control over lighting, posing, everything, right? Like, cause it's a portrait. If you're doing landscape, they're still expecting that you have control, time of day, uh, camera placement, depth of field, focus, horizon line, you have control. If you're shooting a wedding, they're gonna be, they, they should be you know, more gracious because you don't always have those kind of controls, um, but the rules still apply, right? Leading lines, color, harmony, focus, all those things, photojournalism, same way. Uh, so where you place your image really kind of can change the judge's mindset. You know, if you if you have a very creative portrait and you put it in portrait and a judge looks at it and goes, God, that lighting isn't traditional or it's really harsh or weird colors, you may not get a good score. But if that was an illustrative or digital artistry, the judge may look at that and go, wow, somebody's trying something new. I'm going to be more gracious with that because it doesn't fall into those. So that's a really good point when you talk about when you talk about categories. So and also um, titles. Titles, yeah, that I got quite a few emails this week asking, is he gonna go for titles? Um, like I know I had titled my images and then I think when they got transferred over the titles weren't there. Um, so I don't know how other people feel. If your title did not come up and you wanna speak up and let us know it was your image, you can do that. If you don't want anyone to know it was your image, you can message me privately. I can say the title or however you wanna do it. Yeah, and I and I hope that there isn't anybody that doesn't want me to show their stuff. But some of these images have metadata, and some of these images have a lot of metadata, um, which reminds me I need to turn off. Uh, I should keep that one off because that one actually has like a lot of metadata in it. Mm. Um, so be be also be cautious of how much data you put in your metadata, like phone numbers, emails, uh, physical addresses. That's fine for your personal archive, but when you convert them to JPEG and you post them on social media or you share them on image competition, all that personal data is going with that file and you never know what can happen with it. <clears throat> so be careful with that. Um, there is definitely some image in, in here that have some titles that don't make any sense to me. So we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, 
in short, and this is this is advice that I've offered over and over again. Um, if you want to find good titles, look at jazz titles, titles of jazz songs. There are amazing titles. That's awesome. Songs. And you can go to you can go to Wikipedia and you can look up like the top jazz catalog, right? And it's a list of all these amazing titles, you know, like like I know your heart or the wind is, you know, my inspiration. You're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a great title. <laughs> wow. Um, when it comes to titles, just like key lines, uh, they should be there to make the image better. And it really helps the judge to understand what's happening. So for those of you that have never judged before, one thing is to understand that judging is not easy. Okay. It's, it's not easy. Um, you think it's easy. You sit in the back and you look at an image and, and the audience, it comes up and you're like, oh, that's probably an 83. And they give it like a 79. And you're like, you guys are idiots. Well, they have to come up with a comment to back up their score, but they don't know if they're going to get called or not. So it's kind of like this jeopardy thing that we play up there. So it can be kind of stressful. So sometimes, sometimes the judges um, have a hard time articulating their thoughts in such a short amount of time, but Keep your title simple because what happens is we hear as a judge, we hear the title, then we see the image. So, you know, if you, if you title an image, three sisters and the image flips around and it's balloons in the middle of a fair, I'm going to be like, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Cause three sisters are rocks out in Moab or you know what I mean? Like my brain goes somewhere else. So you got to try to lead the judge. It's all about leading the judges, making the judges happy. So we'll talk about that a little bit if we, if we see some titles. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen if we don't have any questions before we jump in. Okay. I'm going to share. Let's see what the desktop one. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. So you guys should be able, I don't need to have the chat open. So you should be able to see an image and that's in capture one. Is that correct? You guys can see that? Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I got, I've got all, I've got all of you way over here so I can see everything that I'm doing. So, okay. So this image is titled uh, Beginning the Ritual, and it's a, it's a beautiful image. You know, right away, I'm, I love the co color harmony, things like that. I don't get the title. I don't know what that means. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't speak to anything that I see in the image. So this is a good example of a title that you may want to rethink so that it, it, it best suits the, the artistic process that the judges are going through. Um, technical names that are hard to pronounce don't work either because whoever's doing the announcing has to be able to pronounce it, not you. Um, and leave out technical terms, leave out uh, like um, uh, uh, logistic, you know, coordinates, names of stars, those kind of things. So right away in this image, I like it. It's pretty, it, it feels inviting. Um, but what I'm struggling with on this image is that the shoreline on our left is brighter than the rock that's in the center. My other challenge with this image is, <clears throat> is the rock is dead center. And that we have all this negative space off to the right. I don't think that's, I don't think that that's showing me the viewer what you want me to look at. So right now the whole image is something that I, my eyes are bouncing around. I'm looking at everything. Also, um, this type of border, I think, does more to distract from the image than it does to add to the image. And really what we want to do is we want to elevate our images. Okay, I'm so, listening to something, though. So that, they, so that they stand out. That's our goal, right? We want our images to stand out. So what I did was is I cropped that image. I just cropped off the, here we don't, I guess we don't need these tools. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. So you guys have a little bit bigger image to see. So what I did was, is I just cropped off the border just for the sake, I'll show you some different border options later. Um, and what I did was, is 
I brought up the exposure on the rock. So this was this is what it looked like before, and then see what I did is I brought down the outside. Now I'm doing this on a JPEG, so you have to realize like the quality is only going to be so good if you're working from a raw. And so now I feel like an image like this is now I know exactly what the viewer might want me to look at. It's that rock in the middle, draws my attention right there. Um, now, if that's not what you want, then, then you know, you can obviously tweak this differently. But for me, when, when you look at this image, it's kind of a, a lot of the same plane. I don't have a lot of depth. I don't have a lot of focus. With an image like this, clearly this rock right here is what I'm looking at, okay? So let's see if my, yes, that guy, that guy makes me happy. I love that a lot right there. That is really cool. So bring up the tones in that, push the tones down in the other one. Let's look at this image. <clears throat> I really like this image. I do wish that this area over here and around here it wasn't pure black. Now that could be, you know, the compression of the image because I, I received the JPEG, I'm assuming that I got a good quality image. So I would really like to see, you know, detail in that water. And that's something that a lot of the judges are always going to look at is that do we have a full tonal range in that image? Um, and some of your highlights, like in the boats in here, they're blown out. They're, I mean, they should not be blown out. You know, you can control that. The other thing is, is like um, right down here, right down here, there are some strange artifacts in the yes. water. And I'll just... See these, this to me looks like cloning marks. See these circles and these lines? Hope you can see that. This to me looks like somebody used uh, like a clone brush or something to try to clean up the water and, and they left behind um, some marks. Troy, can we so comment? You, can we comment? Yeah, while you're, yeah I, I'm sorry. I had walked away a second to get water and I came back and this was my picture you had on. Oh so, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so I know about the artifacts and I those, I don't know why I have so many different copies. One is good and everything else, I, I can't find my good copy again. So I know that needs the work. So mostly um, I was wondering your thoughts on the composition because I know the cleanup, yeah, exactly what you're pointing out okay. uh, is very true. And I didn't hear what you said about the title if you address the title, Catalina um, Chaos. I, you know, no, this that's great. Catalina Chaos. That's fantastic. It works great for Southern California. We know who Catalina is. Uh, be cautious of sending that somewhere else with that title if it's Catalina is not going to be obvious, right? Okay. Um, but no, I like the title. I think the title would work really well. So that's okay. that's good. I'm glad glad you asked that. I like the composition. I like the sort of the chaos, the mess that's happening in there. That's fantastic. Um, the one thing though, is watch this key line. What, when I judge and, and Joyce is welcome to, to charm in here. Um, when she judges, I, I might comment that I don't like the key line, but I don't take points off for the key line because I don't think the key line at our level, um, is something that deserves a score. Right. Um, but so I don't is want this to take anything. Is this one too big and the color too bright for the photo? I this do people? think so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is what I would do. See, I changed it before. Much better. Much better. After. Yeah. Okay, great. Can, the goal is the goal is really just to show me the judge where the edge of your image is. That's it. That's it. Once you get more sophisticated, like I'm sure many of you know who Karen Nakamura is, um, she does an amazing job creating, you know, her edges, her mats, her key lines, her flowers go outside the mats and stuff. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's an art all by itself. So this is what I would do. I would do something simple like this. Okay. And did I hear you say not to have so much black in the background, you would put more of the water like that's in the top right corner, maybe at the bottom of the of the boats there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you really don't want the boats just floating in space. 
Okay. And and the same thing would apply if you're doing a, a high key portrait or something like that. Like you need to ground your subjects. Um, it just, I know it sounds weird, but the truth is it makes the judges happy, right? And that's what we're trying to do in competition. Everybody else may look at this and not even realize that, but a judge and a critical eye of a judge and trying to make a comment, trying to give this a score compared to other images, we're going to be like, you know, the left, the left half of these boats are just floating in space. So very good feedback. Thank you. Of course, of course. <clears throat> okay, so here's here's our next image. Um, I love this shot. I mean, I, I love this location. I've been there many times. I know right where this is. Um, and that's something to be aware of <clears throat> when you're entering image competitions is that a lot of the judges have been to places that you're going to go and that you're submitting images from. And it's it's hard to impress a judge who's been there and seen better than what you're showing them. And so with an image like this, like this is gorgeous. I love this. Um, currently the way that it's presented, I probably wouldn't merit it. It would be pretty close um, with some tweaking and some work. I think it would get into a low merit for me. Um, the title clear and bright through the trees. It's a nice title. It, 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 doesn't distract me, but it doesn't motivate me to think differently. Um, it gives me the sense that when I look at this image that uh, the maker wanted me to not only look at the look at Half Dome, but they wanted me to really pay attention to the border. And I'm not a big fan of those type of borders. Um, so let's just talk about the image in the middle. You know, this this is a beautiful scene, but our subject, which is half dome, isn't being highlighted. Everything else kind of has the same tonal factor, the same shadow. The, it, it doesn't stand out, right? Like our hero, half dome. So burn down those outside areas, burn down the shadows, bring in the saturation a little bit more. And now what you can see is half dome kind of pops out, right? So you see that difference. And that's something that I did again. This is just done on a JPEG file, so it, it's not even going to be as good. But this is how I might present it, as opposed to that. So again, kind of like that that first image. <clears throat> this is more about the entire edge to edge, pixel edge to edge, where this really kind of allows me to fall into the scene. I'm immediately drawn right to half dome, um, whether it's the reflection or it's the actual half tone, right? The non-reflection. Um, I'm really drawn into this and I really like that. Some of the things that I would take great care with when you're doing your dodging and burning and your editing is make sure that you're, um, you're doing it in the raw if possible, because anytime that you bring it in and post, you have a chance of sort of deteriorating and getting color casts and things like that. So you gotta be careful. Like in this, this particular image, and this is just, I didn't do it well, but see right here where it's lighter at the edge and then it gets darker, make sure that that tone carries properly all the way out. Um, and that was just me, you know, doing a quick burn, uh, but watch for those things. That's going to be really critical. All right. So if anybody has questions or thoughts or anything, just jump in as we go. No, oh, thanks. I'm going to jump to the next one. Now, this, this was an image that I, I, I love this image, by the way. And I looked at it for a little while because I thought there's really nothing that I want to change in here. But as a judge, I would have a hard time giving it a high score. Part of it is, is sort of the sophistication of the lighting matching these fire sparks, right? So the sparks themselves, like, like let, let's imagine that this is real, right? Let's imagine that, that, that <clears throat> well, there's no orange glow coming on her from those orange sparks. So they, they're kind of just there, right? They're just like phantoms. They're just, they just exist there. There should be some color cast coming into her a little bit more. <clears throat> and then I realized that we have this sort of light streak in the top left-hand corner, but 
it doesn't really sell it for me that that's, that's there, right? I think it's kind of cool. But that doesn't necessarily mean it needs to change. So what I, what I did was, is I just simply burned the outside edges a little bit, toned down her arms, um, and allowed her face to pop out a little bit more. And I think that just by doing a little subtle change like that, this would bring me up a lot higher in score, you know? Um, and I can't do it <clears throat> in, the, in the JPEG file because I don't have the fidelity. So the arms kind of go muted and muddy and stuff, but, but I would definitely, I would definitely do that. Um, not only that, the, the lighting in this doesn't really match the, the streaks of light from the top left-hand corner because there's, a, there's definitely a light up to her right that's coming across her face. It's creating a sort of a, a shadow on the left side or camera left, the right side of her nose. And I can see that, but you got this other light supposedly from the left. It's confusing. It just creates a lot of confusion in the viewer. Not all judges are gonna be able to articulate that or they're not all gonna be able to look at an image and go, oh, I see what you did here. There should be some orange from this. There, her, her, her foot, like that light that's behind her. Like, I have no idea where that light's coming from. It's just kind of a glow in the background. Um, but it feels a little disjointed, if that makes sense. So I don't really have a lot that I would do with this. And the other thing I would do is, is create a presentation with this. That's really important is to, you know, put it, put a, put it on a, on a background, create a key line around it. Um, let's see, do I have, let's just actually do that. Is the, is the maker in here? Do we want to talk about this? Maker here. Hello. Oh, who was that? I didn't see. No, it was just me, Michelle talking, asking if there's anybody. Oh, wants to claim it. That's fine. That's fine. If nobody wants to, that's cool. I don't want to pressure anybody to do anything. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the background. So I'm going to do I'm going to do this kind of fast. So go to new, four thousand by four thousand two hundred resolution, because that's our size. And let's just do this right here. This this will really help the judges quite a bit. So Command T. Now I think that a uh, something I like this because she's looking off to the left. So what I'm going to do is is I'm a big fan of of cropping things a little oddly. So I might do something like that. And then we'll do a stroke. Where is it at? Layer stroke. And I like the strokes to be really thin. <clears throat> Maybe we can pull one from, from there. Yeah, so you can see that my stroke width is, I'm gonna do like three. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. So there we go. Oops, no, don't do that. Oop, nope, it's not gonna save it back. So anyway, so that to me would add a couple points to the average judge because the impact of that is better than that. On top of some of the subtle editing within the image, things like that. I, by the way, I love, I love this image. I love where this image is going. I think the creative style is really great. Um, I dig it. I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it's a little bit different, which I really love. So I like that. I like that a lot. So you're doing really good there. Um, if you're not a Marvel fan, watch Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange in there, they do a lot of, they do a lot of like these magical movements, right? Where they're like fiery sparks. And when they do those, there's an orange glow everywhere. And it's just the ambiance, right? So kind of play to that. So there's that. Okay, let's move on. So this is called uh, Visitor. <clears throat> this is in the illustrative category. So it's a fun image. I like it. Uh, in the current in the current iteration, I would be challenged to merit it, um, partly because I can see some some burning marks and stuff in this building where it's kind of blotchy. Uh, I can see some you know halo around the trees, and so it feels to me like this this sky was dropped in. Um, also, 
being a landscape photographer and spending a lot of time outside the the milky way the sky is dark and there's darkness in between the stars and i really want to see the darkness in between the stars i love the concept of this by the way i really like this a lot very unique very creative uh, a, a way to do an image so what i did was is i did a little work on it so i brought the overall exposure down i made it feel more like night and a little less flat. I removed some of the distracting elements just by burning them down. So like you can see down here in the right-hand corner, the top edge of this building, the front of this door is quite bright. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring those down because those are distracting elements. So if you take, if I flip this image upside down, this is actually the things that your brain looks at first. The same thing happens whether it's right side up. That's where your brain goes first. Your brain goes up here in the sky. And so what I wanted to do is I just really wanted to sort of darken it, give it some more mood. Also, <clears throat> the, the face of the space guy down here, it's not, it's not convincible. It's not a, it's not a good composite you know? And so it, it just doesn't work. And so, you know, get a, get a real face mask and, and get that gold shield on there and something to feel more real. This, this, I know how this, how this is done. I mean, it's a clone and stamp and it doesn't work. Not for me. So what I did was I darkened it, made it a little bit more moody and there's still a little bit of stars you can see in there. I also uh, burned down the left side of this image. And the whole point of all of this is, is to remove the distracting elements and to try to get your judges to focus on the things that tell the story. And for me, <clears throat> the hero of this image is the Milky Way. And then I see this creepy guy standing under this this awning next to like a, an abandoned gas station, right? I like those, that's the order that my brain sees them in. And I like that story a lot. An image like this, I'd be low eighties probably, you know, I would, I would look at it really hard. And if there were any cloning tracks or halos or things that I didn't like, I would, I might not merit it, but properly done. I like this image a lot. It's very creative. This image, everything kind of has the same attention, the same draw. So let's move on. I feel like I'm going really fast. <laughs> All right, let's look at this guy. So these guys, these images are a struggle for competition because they're colorful, they're great, they're super fun to look at. But I think from a competition standpoint, as a judge, and I think judges in general, they're gonna look at this and there's, where's my leading line? Where's my subject? Where's, the, where's my hook? I realize that we have this golden rock down here um, that, is, that stands out differently from the rest, but the brightness level of the rock in the lower right is the same as the rocks in the upper left. So I'm not drawn into that. So everything in this image has the same attention. Everything in this image to me, it has the same focus. Everything in here has the same priority. So it's harder to, to, to apply, you know, the rest of the 12 elements to this image, you know, where is, where is the creativity? Is, it, is this just a snapshot over the top of this thing? Like, I don't, I don't know. I like the colors, but I don't, I mean, I don't know. So, you know, doing something, and this is going to be sloppy, so bear with me. But, you know, doing something of that nature, and then let's bring up that rock a little bit. So let me just bring up, like, maybe the contrast, and where's my clarity? Here it is. 
There we go. Got some highlights, some whites, a little bright. Okay. So something, something along these lines is a little bit, for me, it's a little bit better. Let me reset this now so we can actually. So this is, so this is the, this is how it came in. And then I saturated it and I added the, see how the rock now stands out. So to me, that's a more powerful image than just, than just that guy right there. This is one of those, this is one of those images that like a lot of us as photographers, you know, we go to a place, we see a thing, we photograph it. Um, the experience is really part of that photograph for us. Um, but do the viewers get that sense? You know, do the viewers understand what you went through to get that or what that really is? Or, you know, and if they don't get it, especially as the judges, they're not, they're not going to get it. I, I remember, and this is, this is, you guys have down in San Diego, you have the color run that happens. And I remember I was judging down there and, and they showed this image and it was just this big cloud of color with this one head, like way up in the corner. And it had a weird title. And I, and I gave it, I gave it like a 69. I didn't, I didn't think it was any good. And everybody in the room was mad at me <laughs> because how could I not know what the color run was? How could I not know that? But I didn't live in San Diego and I didn't see it. So it didn't communicate well to me. Um, and that's one of the things that we have to, we have to keep in mind is those things don't, don't always communicate well. Jump in here, by the way, anybody that wants to. No, no, the, I totally agree. I think you're so right on everything you're saying right now. I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm just making stuff up as I go. Oh, it's good. No, that's good. <laughs> And then this was so because that was my image and it was an image that I'm like, I'm gonna throw this in and see what how it'll do in competition. I think it scored an 80. Um, but you're you're right. There isn't I don't know where to look. Everything you said was right. So thank you. It and that's a that's a really good example for us as as creatives because we have to we have to get out of our own heads when we look at our own images and that's why it's good to show our images to other people show images to non-photographers because it's it's important that you know you you hear what somebody says because a non-photographer may look at this and go is that a bug up there in the corner you'd be like oh my god i never saw that <laughs> you know well, it was my non-photographer husband that encouraged me to enter this one in competition. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was going to say sometimes, sometimes you got to go with their suggestion too, because you never know. Yeah. You never, you never know. Um, I'll show you this image right here. You guys can see the way, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, beautiful. So I didn't want to enter this. Um, Margie who she's, you know, she's my, my wife and she's, she's also a photographer. She's like, yeah, I think th they won't get it. They won't get it. Um, my daughter, who's a graphic designer, she's like, you have to enter this. You have to enter this. It's so good. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be crappy. It scored a 94. And I was like, yes, that's great. I got this figured out. So I'm going to do an image like this. That's great. We all loved it. It did not merit. <laughs> mm -hmm. They just, you know, and so I did good on the other one because I listened to them and then I got, I got confident and I thought, well, <laughs> I could do it again. <laughs> nope. But don't you think, um, and I know you and I have talked about this before, like it depends on who your judges are and what competition you're entering at the time. I mean, I've had images that scored 78 at WPPI and 95 at IPC. I mean, it just, you kind of got to know your audience of what you're entering. And then every once in a while, do you throw one out there that like you might get a, a pool of judges that just that, that wave. The second one was amazing and the other one wasn't. I mean, you just, mm -hmm. just depends on who the people are. Don't you agree? I, I do, I do. And I'm, I'm showing you this image because 
<clears throat> this image did not do well at IEPPV. It did not do well at PPOC. It did not do well at state, but it went loan at PPA. And um, I didn't change it. I didn't, I didn't change it. I just, I loved the image enough that I said, I don't care. I'm just going to enter it. So yes, it has to do with your judges. And sometimes just because you love the image, you know, you should enter the image. So I think it's, I think it's really important to understand that the judges are going to have a big part to play in it, but also you have to trust your image and every, t every type of competition you take it to is going to have a different look. That just so happened that year, there wasn't a lot of good wedding images. So I did really good, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let me get this one out of here. Um, so Irene, you made a comment about a key line. I just, I don't have the chat turned off because I can't see yeah, it. Yeah, you, you addressed it like right after us. I should have just- Okay. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to miss that, but I didn't see that, so. And when we talk about image competition, oh my gosh, we could talk for hours about just the, the theory and philosophy behind how judges think or why they like this image or that image. And, you know, and I have some images we can talk about if you guys want to get into that. Um, Michelle, I'm assuming this is yours. Oh, you're muted, dear. It is hers. I'll vouch for her. <laughs> this one, uh, I had titled it um, Mounds of Moss. So this, this, is, this type of image is another one of those type of images that, you know, just to be brutally honest, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to merit. I, I, it's a, it's a snapshot, right? It's not a snapshot in quality, right? Because, you know, obviously it's, in, it's in focus and it's balanced and it's, you know, the exposure is good, but it's really just one of those kind of things where you have to ask yourself if somebody else stood right there in that spot, how is this different than what anybody else could take standing there? And if it's, if it, if it's not that different, then did you really work that location? Did you, did you find a subject? Like, where's our subject? There's no subject. Okay. Yeah, this one yeah. came up at Image Comp a few months back and there was a lot of talk about it because my thought was it's, I was going for like the artsy fartsy look and one of the judges really got it and was like, no, this is really artistic and this is artsy. And then the other ones were thinking like how you are. And I'm, I just don't know what I think, <laughs> honestly, now. I wouldn't re-enter it. I wouldn't send it on the district or IPC, but, but it was an interesting conversation. You know, I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't, I don't see this as being, and don't take this the wrong way, but I know you told oh. me to be blunt, right? Yeah, be blunt. I, 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 I honestly see this as a snapshot. I okay. see this as a, oh, and then, okay. then you move on. Like, where's the technical skill that it takes to create this? Where's the creativity in this shot? How is this inspiring? Where is the, you know, what? it doesn't come through in this, right? Now, even in the JPEG, I can zoom up and I can see that, that you have an incredible amount of detail all the way through this image. So this is one of those kind of images that would be exquisite hanging in a gallery. It's one of those kind of images that if it was on your wall and it was 60 inches wide that you could walk up to it and you could find insects maybe on the rocks, right? Like it, it would just be one of those kind of things like a tapestry that you could just look at forever. Um, but competition, competition, it's always going to be, it's, it's always going to be that, right? It's always going to be that, that challenge. And that's what I needed to hear because I normally don't enter these types of images in image comp. So I threw them in there to see what would happen. And this is great. I like this feedback. Mm -hmm. But I love what Troy said, because you could stare at this image forever, it, even if it wouldn't do well there. It, there's, it's such an intriguing image, though. Right, right. And, you know, keep taking these images, Michelle, because by, by you taking these images and realizing that maybe you're not 100% happy with it, or maybe taking the critique somebody else is giving you, you'll take this image differently next time. 
maybe next time you'll get a slightly wider lens and you'll shoot with a really shallow depth of field. And, you know, you'll come, you'll come in really low, like on this rock right here. Right. And you put that rock like in a third into the scene in the foreground. And then the rest of the background is like super soft as it falls out. And then you, you look around and you find yourself like a leaf or another rock or a twig or something. You're like, Oh, that's my hero. Right. Like I'll put that twig in there. And now you've created the scene you see in your mind's eye, mm -hmm. but photographically it translates better. Okay. And I, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Makes sense. Yep. You know, Ansel Adams spent a lot of time photographing <laughs> El Capitan. And, um, you know, by, by every standard, El Capitan is, is grand and it's huge and it's big and it's amazing and it's wonderful. And, you know, the thing, the thing about El Capitan for Ansel Adams at the time was um, he was not able to convey the way he saw it in his mind's eye until... And he had photographed this shot. This is the shot. He had photographed this hundreds of times, hundreds of times he had made the climb up there and he had photographed this on a, on a eight by 10 view camera. But it wasn't until he put a red retina filter in front of the lens that this was the shot that conveyed the monstrosity and the, and, and the, the texture of the granite and the dark sky. And you know what I mean? Like, all the other shots, I couldn't find, I couldn't find earlier versions of this because they're quite mundane. Um, but that's what we're on. We're on that journey. Be like, I really like this. How do I convey that? Right. So you can do it. <laughs> All right. Let's hope that makes sense. Yes. Thank you. Keep shooting these though. Keep shooting them. Don't stop shooting them. All right. So this is really cool. This is the kind of this is the kind of stuff I wish I could do. This title um, was, um, I think it was Angel of Fire, the Fire Angel or something. That's what I was. Oh, thinking. I love it. I love it. Um, so this is yours too, right? Yeah, it says Michelle three. Oops. Yeah. Hang yeah. On, my my, my screensaver turned on. Said I'm supposed to take a break. <laughs> um. I really enjoy this image a lot. A couple little things that I'm struggling with. So right off, right off the bat, um, if this is going to go in like digital artistry, I would, I would, I would love to see the elements that you use to build this. I think that would be really great to kind of see how you built it. If you're doing digital artistry, if you're doing it like this in Illustrated, where you're not going to show those, that's fine. Um, you know, I'm going to be in the mid '80s. You know, eighty three to eighty five, kind of thing on this because I I just I love the whole look. I love the consistent color. Um, I'm really enjoying that. When it comes to composites, sometimes they're really hard to sell, and so on this image, the there's a couple places that I'm having some struggles with. So. One, she's not, she's not balanced left and right. So there's more space on her, her right or her right camera left between her hand and the edge than there is on camera right between her left hand and the edge. Um, some people say, well, why does that matter? It doesn't really matter. It matters if the judge is considering giving you an 89 or a 90. That will matter then. So think of those things. The presentation's great. I'm totally, I'm totally cool with the presentation. But one of the things that I noticed right away was there's there's no fire or flames or anything coming up in front of her hands, um, which I think would be better. And then some of these flames down here that are coming up over her torso, you know, they 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 feel fake, right? So lean into the lean into the flames down here, I think would be better for you, right? You've got some nice flames over on the left. And honestly, Irene could, could tell you way better than I because she's a magician at this stuff. So I'm just looking at it visually. But also, um, I don't know if these little flecks on her shirt are dust spots. And then the, the folds in the shirt, like I would, really, I would really wish that the flecks weren't there and I would really like to see some of the folds kind of controlled. 
right? Because if this is going to be in a portrait category, something like that, I would think there would be a little more control there. Um, that's me being nitpicky. The other, just the other thing is too, is like, right, let me get over here, right here on her chest. Oh, it looks it's, a blotchy. Yeah, it's blotchy. So to me, it feels like the dodging and burning or whatever technique was used in there wasn't done smoothly. Okay. And an image like this, I mean, it's really, you know, let's face it, the light, the lighting on the subject's not really sophisticated. The posing's not really sophisticated. Um, the subject itself is something that's super unique, right? Like it's a, it's a nice portrait. So what's really adding to this image to really give it a high merit or really kind of lean into like, this is super creative is you've got this beautiful redhead surrounded by fire and how you built that. That's the that's the element of this image, right? So you got to do that part really well. Okay. Troy, would you crop it down a, a little bit more? Um, you know, initially I thought that, but I realized the flames that are coming up They're are wings. more like wings and those are like the wing tips. Oh, yeah, and... yeah, yeah. I see that now as you say that. And if you cropped it to the tip, that would be too much. They'd be, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a, that's a super fair question too, because initially that was my first thought was like, oh, we need to come in tighter. Cause I really feel like this image would do better tighter, but it, but see, if you could bring the tones down on the outside and bring her face up. And would you do more with her eyes, bring her eyes out more? Yeah. That was going to be the very next thing. It's almost like you're reading my notes. <laughs> I am. I've got it right here. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. It's great. It's great. No, this is fun. I, I prefer the discussion. It's good. Yeah. Um, I am a, and, and again, this is, this is coming from me. I am a huge fan of using the light to direct the viewer's eye through the image. Okay. So let's just flip this image upside down. What's the first thing you're looking at? The very top of the image. Right. Or the, the very flame. bottom of the image. Yeah. Right. Because because that's bright, right? But if I go to this image and I do the same thing, you're more likely to fall on her face, mm. which is really where we want her to look, where we want our viewers to look. Now, knowing those rules, or not rules, but knowing those things, you can use those to guide people or guide the eyes around the image in a way that may be completely different than that. It's entirely up to you. But in this case, um, I think that you want, you, know, you want your eyes to fall on the subject. So I would do that. And then um, I would probably, and this is not gonna look totally great because again, I don't have, the raw file. Oops, let me reset that. So if we were to come in and, you know, bring the eyes up a little bit. And in an image like this, and I am, and I'll, there's another image later I'll comment on, I am not a fan of overworking the eyes at all. However, in this image, I think it really lends itself to that idea, right? So that's a little sloppy, but I, I hope I hope you get that idea. Yeah, very cool. And it also it also kind of detracts from this sort of ten percent flame thing that's going on down here. That as somebody who who understands Photoshop, I feel like there was a layer in there and, and the opacity was reduced by ten percent or twenty percent or something. And in reality, that's not how fire works. Fire, you've got bright spots, dark spots, it wisps in, it wisps out. And so I feel like, you know, erase some of it, make some of it a little brighter, a little darker, you know. I'm gonna go and in that, this one and re revamp the whole thing. And then this little <laughs> triangle between like her her legs, her knees down here, like that's that's even brighter than the flame next mm -hmm. to it. So that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Right. Bring that down. And then show it to Irene because she, yeah. <laughs> she knows how to do this way better than me. Uh, but what a what a cool concept! I really love this. Um, I really love this a lot. So, 
All right. Very cool. I see the world like this. I just can't make these images. I just mm -hmm. spend too much time on them. Well, but I like it. It's taken me a long time to learn Photoshop enough to be able to get out what's in my head onto the screen. Yeah, and that's all part of the journey, right? Is that if you can figure out how to do something this extreme, then when you have sort of a client portrait or just a traditional portrait and you need to do some, you know, blemish removal or something like that's that becomes a breeze. When you can put, you know, you can put a, mo a model in, in a field of fire with wings and stuff like <laughs> you can, ah, little bags into the eyes. I can take care of that. Um. This, I, I really like this a lot uh, for, for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I look past all the artifact and I'm thinking, well, that's, such a, that's a great pose. I love that pose. Like I can, I can kind of in my mind's eye see it without, without all the art on top of it. So I'm thinking, well, that's great. It started with a really good pose. Um, we've got this really nice lighting, you know, uh, it kind of feels a little bit like short light. Um, I, I do wish the back of her hand and her arm camera, right. were a little bit darker. I don't like the fact that they're brighter than her face, but that's just a traditional portrait, you know, perspective, but everything else, I totally, I totally dig it. Like I'm high eighties on this. I just, I love it. Um, what would keep me from what's yeah. that? Go ahead. I want to, what would keep you what? Oh, what would keep me from going higher? are the things that I said were um, like her left, her right hand camera left is, is I think too bright. Her, her right, her left arm camera right is too bright and her face is being lost a little bit. It's a little dark and her eyes are a little dark. So knowing that this is digital artistry, I know you can bring those, those elements forward and take the eye, the arms and stuff and put, let them have less notice, kind of push them back if you will. Okay. Do you think the white, under her nose and on her lips. Like I was trying to do, I don't know, I was trying, again, trying to get all artsy and crazy. Um, what are your thoughts on the white uh, line, lining on her face? Is that too uh, distracting? I'm, yes, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, what I would do is I would go more, and I know the judges aren't gonna get to get this close, but like that little white and that white there, I would probably go with more of the gold tone. Okay. Um, because here's, here's the thing, you know, it's a human face and we know what a human face looks like. And we know that you're manipulating it a little bit, but you know, you put a booger on her lip, we're going to think it's a booger, yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, okay. it, it's just, it's like, you can't put, you can't put something in somebody's teeth, no matter how creative you're trying to be like, Ooh, you got to get that out, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but other than that, I, you know, I, I really like this a lot and I love the direction that you're going with this. And I think creatively, I think this is, this is really great. Cool. Thank you. In competition, this is one of those kind of images that can go really high and do really well. Or really low. Or do really low. Depends who you but get. Don't, but that's okay. Right. Yeah. But that's okay. Um, it, I'm a big fan and I wish that all the um, image competitions would release who the judges are going to be. For some reason, some groups like to keep it a secret. I think that's ridiculous. Well, do you think I want to know. Taylor, your image you're submitting towards th that judge that night? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Okay. I think so. I think so. Um, <laughs> if you're going to have a, if you're going to have Jim Doyle and Irene and uh, Casey Newman as a panel, well, you might know that Casey is sort of middle of the ground. He can go high-end technical and he likes artsy stuff. You know, Jim Doyle is an architectural photographer and he, he may not get this at all, but then you know that Irene being a digital artist, like I have a good chance with Irene, like Irene might get this, right? I think that's, I think that's better than the crapshoot of, you know, submitting this to a panel of, of three gyms, no, 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 not trying to be critical of Jim, but that's, that's like his specialty. Right. So it's, it's not this. Right. I think that's how we learn better. And 
we're at a local level, right? Let's let's be honest. We're not this is we're not we're not international where we're at. So any questions on that one before I nope, thank you for the feedback. You're welcome. So this is a uh, this is a photojournalism uh, bottle rocket. Um, this is one of those this is one of those kind of shots that photojournalistically I get, but I don't think it's going to score well because by the title and by the focus, it's all about the water bottle, and everything else has either got motion in it or it's you know, it's out of focus or it's out of depth of field because of where it's at. Um, I think that, you know, this image would be better. And I didn't, I didn't play with this. So I'm just, I'm just looking, I think, you know, an image like this might be better, you know, if we did, if we did something, you know, like that or something more abstracty where, you know, we're not taking a person and we're not cutting half their body off, you know, um, you know, something, something of that nature. And then let's see if it looks good in black and white now. No. So this one, I think is going to, is going to be tough in competition simply because of that. Even photojournalistic images um, need to have things like leading lines and points of focus and things like that. And, and just with the water bottle, there's really not a lot that I can see mentally to do with this. That's going to, in a sense, bring it up for me. Um, an image like this, I might be 77, 78, 79, depending on, you know, what, what I've seen that night. And cause I can't see it really big right here, but if we had a, a more foreground thing in focus, right? Like if, like if his leg was in focus or something like that, that might help. Or if he was coming at the camera more and his hand was in focus, but the rest of the bike was out of focus. And I realized like, this is, this is a photojournalistic shot. It's a hard pan. So you gotta, you gotta work with that. Okay. My oolong ginger tea is keeping me going. Caffeinated? Be up all night. Well, a little bit. I yeah. had a I had a Mountain Dew before I started, so <laughs> well, I do my best work on the Dew. Yeah. Yes. Um. So, I really I really love this image and um. Being photojournalism, it's going to be judged differently. So we talked about this early on. Um about you know how how a judge is going to look at something in photojournalism versus something like in portraiture i personally think this image would do better in portraiture than it would in photojournalism because because it is a portrait um the lighting is still fantastic so something to consider i think the judges are going to be stronger in portrait with this than photojournalism um because it but it also tells a different story you know, so with that said, and that's, you might get a great score in photojournalism too. So I'm just kind of playing that out. Um, with that said, what I, what I did was I, you know, I looked at this image. Um, the presentation is great. I would nudge this image up a little bit on your black frame. Again, I like a chin under there. Uh, what that does, it feels like the image has something to sit on and you know, play with that a little bit. That's a traditional gallery mounting technique. So if you go into like a traditional print gallery, um, you'll notice a lot of times in the white mats, not all the time, but a lot of times they'll be, they'll have a chin on them, a little bit thicker on the bottom, the image is lifted up and it gives you a sense that the image is like on a little pedestal or something. So play with that, you might like it. Um, the key line could be a little bit bolder in here a little bit brighter and I would probably just do uh, like a pin white line like three pixels white and I mean three pixels wide and I don't know maybe 50 percent you don't need a lot so even in even in um even in photojournalism you can do dodging and burning so the thing that I that I really sort of wanted to to see in this image was I think that her face can come out a whole lot more than the rest of the image oops I don't want to do that so let's go to here. I'm just doing a radio gradient and it's a little sloppy, but you'll get the, you'll get the sense. So then what I'll do is I'll bring up the whole background. So there we go. 
So that versus that. Just, just bring her face out. If you're going to keep a color, just bring her face out. Again, this is using light to guide the direction of our viewer. Right, that one and that one. So if we switch between the two, this one, you find her face pretty quickly. This one, you're kind of kind of hunting around. Um, if you want to do some light reading, uh, look up, do some research on how your eyes work and how our brains see colors and lights and the cones and the rods. You know, we have like 30% of the, of the receptors in our eyes are for color. The rest of the receptors, there's like a hundred million receptors versus like 30 million receptors that are verse that are, that are for, for light. And we see mostly in black and white and monotone. That's how we can see in the dark. So that's why our eyes are drawn to brighter and darker areas within an image, right? Whether, whether we consciously do it or not. So that's something to consider with this image. I, I love this. I would be, whether it's in photojournalism or it's in portrait, I would be in the high eighties because I, I love it and it makes me sad and it's so timely and it has a title on this one. What's that? Did you talk about the title on this one? A little bit. It's called, it's called COVID widow. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I think that whether, whether you put, there's a lot of titles you could use, but I think that this right here is one of those type of images that, um, we can all relate to. We all have a personal experience with this, whether this was an emotional sense or this is a physical sense of somebody like this. Um, I think that's great. One of the things to consider when you're, when you're doing your images is you need to ask yourself is, is color adding to the image? And I, I have a reputation for always wanting everything to be black and white. Um, so I get teased a lot about it, but I do really like black and white. And I think that you take an image like this and when you, when you turn it to black and white, and I didn't think about doing this, but we could actually do a little split tone and bring some, bring some warmer tones into the shadows like that. I don't know if you can see the subtlety in that tone change, but to me, this is just so much more powerful. Personal preference, splitting hairs, whatever you do though, great image. Just change the tone, burn down the area around her, bring her face up, you know, work with that a little bit. I think that, I think that you can go a long way with that. Okay. This is, did I do two of these? I did. Okay. This is, uh, my girdle killing me. Now I'm assuming you meant to say my girdle is killing me. So be really careful because technically Whoever's reading your title has to read it the way it's written. And if a judge hears you say, my girdle killing me, that's going to, that's going to create, you know, a pause in the room. The judges are going to ask them to reread the title and there you go. Right. Try. So, yep. Yeah. That's one of mine. And I did mean to say is, so thank you. But I wanted to, to say, ask again, I, I was thinking about this driving around today because I'm thinking, okay, at this age, this lady has every right to not be wearing a girdle. <laughs> so maybe I should change that title and say, you know, something like age is only a number or make it funny and you're, you're only as old as you look or, you know, thinking that maybe I should do a different title. What do you think? Um, I think, I think the comedy angle is great. Uh, the first thing I thought of was kiss my dot, 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 oh, you know, <laughs> oh God, that would suit her. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, because man, there's so much personality or, uh, this is what attitude looks like, or this is what confidence looks like, or, you know, something like that. But, but you're on the right track. I think, um, this is a, this is a really fun image. So, photographically, you're going to have some challenges with this image because um, I think it'll merit. I think it'll get a low merit. Uh, 
because we have some distracting elements like the purple and the and the green in the corners i think those are slightly distracting because they're outside they're right at the edge of the frame if they were inside the frame i don't think they'd be so bad um and then the lighting is you know it's it's kind of harsh right like it's it was sunlight very very harsh midday it does need work i mean this isn't finished right now, this is where you have an opportunity to choose where you enter this image what category <laughs> If you enter this in photojournalism, the judges are going to be more forgiving on the light, the balloons, things like that. If you enter this in portrait, I think they're going to tear you up um, because there's no light in her eyes. Uh, you know, she's not making eye contact or, you know, whatever. There's so many things, you know, the flowers are very dominating. They should be lower, but you didn't, I mean, I'm assuming that this is photojournalism and you didn't pose this person in this place. Right. So take and I, I loved I loved the wilted flowers with how old, with her age. And I do yeah. think it was really telling the story. Yeah, and I and I agree. And I, and I love this image. One of the only things that I did was <laughs> I, just, I just did a little dodging and burning to darken the outside edges a little bit. So we brought a little more attention on her face. Um, but I think that enter this in photojournalism. And I think it'll go a long way because you didn't, you didn't have control over those things. So, so I couldn't crop those uh, corners out completely with those balloons, but that just with the dodging and burning fade them out more. And I could crop a little more on the right where the purple uh, balloon is. If, if this goes in portrait, you have to work no. harder on the balloons. Um, no, photojournalism, I'm thinking then. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, just leave them. Just leave them in there. Oh. Um, it does look like you've dodged the edges a little bit mm -hmm. on this. And but the one thing that's really that's really telltelling is see how bright this area is right here. Yes. Okay. So you dodged all this, but not this. And that's obvious. So make sure that when you're when you're doing your dodging and burning that you always think about how it would be in the real world, right? So in the real world, if that top right-hand corner, those beams were a little bit darker, the rest of the paneling would be darker as well. So bring, bring all that down. Uh, I can't, I'm sure I'm not gonna do a good job of this because you have to do a little bit of masking in here, but you wanna bring all of this down as well. And what that's going to do is that's going to get rid of that bright spot and that's going to help draw more attention to that wild hair and that face, right? See if that's, oops, just a little bit. And I should dodge, uh, burn that hair down too somewhat or just leave it because it is so white. Just a, just a tad. Oh, that's bad. I did. I did. <laughs> that was too much. Um, just a little bit right? It's the subtlety. So you see her face first and then the hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can't really put catch lights in eyes that are that baggy. <laughs> well, really in photojournalism, you can't anyway. So right. that's right. okay. That's yeah. why photojournalism. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it exists. Yeah, but you would great. enter, you, you would enter this at our level at PPSDC. You think that would be okay to enter? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I if was not, having trouble. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, if nothing else, to get yeah. more feedback. Right? I was, just, I was right. And I was having trouble with my um, sizing and my computer kept crashing and my doing my key line and borders aren't, you know, even I have one more to go. And um, somehow my key line ended up outside of my, the, the uh, mat on one of them. I don't know how I did that, but um, thank you again for all your feedback. Of course. Yeah. And I'll have, uh, I don't know if you were here, but at the top of the, at the top of the show, I said that I'm, I have a program that I'm, that I did and I'm in the process of editing. I do a little tutorial on how to create this type of look with a key line in, in Photoshop mm -hmm. anyway, super, super simple. But oh, once good. you do it a couple of times, you're like, oh yeah, I can do You're going to do that for us, for our, I've already our created group. it. Yeah, I've okay. already made it. So uh, once that stuff is done, it's going to go on the IEPBB YouTube channel and it's public. So anybody can see it. So, okay. Yeah.
All right. So our next one is Reflecting Pond by Joyce Muscat. So you don't put those in your titles, though, when you enter your, you don't put your <laughs> I'm name. sure I put this in. This was probably entered into Dark Rumors or another, another. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is, this is just absolutely wonderful. This is just such a fun image. And I love the fact that that duck is in there. And I think we, we oftentimes when we, when we build our images or we look at our images or we're hunting for images, we overlook the little things. And to me, the duck makes this image. Um, and so, so that's super fun. The, the big challenge with this image is the resolution. It, it really just, it really just doesn't hold up. Um, the, you know, I can see it's kind of pixely in some of these areas, you know, the tonal gradations in the water, it just, it just feels like it's just a low resolution image, which is really tough. Okay. So, you know, take an image like this and you can apply some artistic painterly effects to it. You can soften it a little bit and, and work that, and then, you know, use it in illustrative or digital artistry, and it'll go a really long way. Um, traditional portraiture or illustrative, well, not, il I mean, illustrative the way it is, or, um, you know, landscape or something, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. That's a good Just, idea. If it is, a, if I don't have a raw, didn't, maybe I didn't start out with a raw image, but then to go into that painterly uh, look, I know I did enter this somewhere, or put it somewhere for critique and there was thought about taking out the fence, but I really like the fence. Um, I think I had even brought some of those geraniums on this side of the fence, um, whether I take out the duck or put in a couple more ducks. <laughs> um, but um, I liked the composition and I did, mm -hmm. I did um, dark in the fence was a pretty, was much whiter before. Um, but if, I'll have to go look at that with that resolution. Yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot you can do. I don't mind the fence to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, I might bring this. I might bring the skyline down because right now the kids are right in the middle, even though they're mm -hmm. off to the left a little bit. I might play with a look like that. But but play with it, right? You've got a great you've got a great image, a great base. Um, I just think you're what's going to really hold you back is the is the resolution. Um, I can just I mean it's just it's really there, it looks oh, like right some there, there's a lot bad work done right there <laughs> yeah yeah and you know this is one of those pictures that it's one of it's one of my favorite go-to places is crystal cove i just uh, it's just a great place for me to get away and um so i have a lot more like when you're tied into a picture so it's great to yeah. get the feedback you know yeah, of course yeah. so and, i'm sure and... i see more than other people do <laughs> And, and you've got some cloning tracks right here. Uh -huh. be, careful, be careful of those. Now, I'm a, I'm a judge. Every judge is different, but I'm a judge that sees all those technical things. And I won't, I won't merit an image that I can see any kind of Photoshop telltale signs at all. Because um, I think right. that, you know, we're at a point now where that stuff should be invisible. You know, right. There's really, yeah, we need to be aware of it. So, And I'm just I, still learning. I'm still learning all of this stuff. So I am oh, yeah. most or feedback at this point so of course we're all learning all the time yeah all the time all right so our next image is the senior and it's titled a rainbow sunset and perfect title i i love that title um great pose i love the lighting even i'm really i'm really happy with the way this lighting is on this subject except the lighting is everywhere and this is what happens depending on how we use our light, uh, light spills all over the place. So what you have to do is either in post, cause it's a pain to do unless you're in a studio and you've got all the gobos and snoots and stuff is think about that light contamination that's falling on the grass in front and like hitting her right shoulder. Generally the, the side of the body that's closest to the light source is brighter. So her right arm can come down a little bit. So I just did a little bit of burning to bring that down. So see how the grass has come down versus there. I toned down her body a little bit because if we have a, a light source should fall off as it gets further away. So to camera right, her, her foot shouldn't be so bright. Oops. Um, and that just brings our attention to her face, which I think is really the intention of this. 
And then I took out all those sparkles in the back. That's entirely up to you if you want to do that. I think they're distracting. Um, and again, I, you know, in a competition sense, we want the judges to be as happy as they can be. We don't want them to have anything that they can pick on. So if there's even an inkling that those are mildly distracting and a judge might go, wow, all those little fireflies back there, I'm not into those, I would take them out. So now this image is just about this beautiful young woman sitting on the grass, amazing senior portrait, you're good. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much okay with the bright sun in the background, but I would be careful with that. Some judges may not like that. In the senior category, it's like a portrait session. You should have, you have unlimited control of your lighting and everything. So, you know, that, that should not, should not be completely overexposed. Um, you know, the, the way it is now, I'm probably low to mid eighties. Cause I, I think it's a great image. If that sky was fixed, if it was that nice candy colored candy cane blue or cotton candy color all the way across, and we didn't have that blown highlight, uh, probably garner another couple points. So, but other than that, you know, the lighting is nice and, um, nice and soft. So that's really good. Okay, let's look at this one. I don't know what I did. Oh, I did. I didn't. I didn't really do a whole lot with this one. I. I think that this image, um, the way it's presented, is is a is a solid. You know, mid eighties. I. I really really like this this whole concept. I like uh, the expression, the pose, the even the presentation. I really dig the presentation. This doesn't have to be on a black border like some other images might need to be. So I think this really just comes across. Um, what would keep me from going higher? What's keeping, what would keep me from going higher from scoring like, a like an 82 and 83 kind of thing is one, I feel that it's a little tight. So the hair is actually touching the edge of the frame, uh, where you cropped it. So give it a little bit more breathing room. We can definitely get away with that. That's, that's no problem. Second of all, the, the the light source um you look you have two yeah it looks like you have two light sources by the reflections in her eyes which is fine but the lower light source is making her hands bright so i would burn her hands down so that we can focus in a little bit more on her face so you know maybe maybe something along those lines um bringing those hands down and I think I think that that could could get a, a a mid to high 80s with a with an image like this. I really like it. Um, you may have some judges uh, critique you about the extra space over here on the left, and I I don't think it really needs to be there. So so let's just crop this real quick, and I'll show you why. So so right now this is basically our image which I think is okay, but this to me feels like a, like a lot stronger crop. Unless you leaned into the looser crop, gave some more space around her hair, and well, I guess I gotta go all the way back. There we go. Uh, open the top, the right up a little bit more, and I think you'll be okay. Maybe, maybe get rid of some of that. I'm not 100% on cropping that left side off, honestly. But what would have been fun is when you shot this, if you would have maybe had some of the some of the hearts like trickling off that way or something, so that space wasn't completely negative. I'm okay with it, but you're going to get some judges that might be more technically picky about it. Um, the other thing that I noticed when I looked at this was I thought I really wish that the hearts were sharp as well, and I know this is shot at a very shallow depth of field. Um, because I have the metadata, so I know what lens it was shot with and what aperture it was at. But I can tell the hearts are soft. Maybe that was intentional, but I just think this image could be stronger if they were if they were sharp. I could be wrong. We could compare them side by side and disagree. I don't I don't know. But that was one of the directions that my brain went. So when you're shooting this, it's not that hard to crank the, the aperture up. Um, and not yet just a couple stops to try to get a little bit more depth of field out of there. So anyway, I, I love the image. I know I'm talking about it a lot, but I, I do love the image and I think it's a very, very strong merit, if not a mid merit.
So with a little dodging and burning on the hands, especially. Other than that, it's solid. I don't know if this was the one. Um, yeah, the eyes on this one look pretty good. Yeah, be really careful overworking the eyes because it comes across, but this one's nice. I can see the little veins in there. This poor thing looks cold. And that left arm in the water, I can see all those, all those little pimply skin, right? Like she looks cold. And so that, that's my first thought right away with this was um, that left arm, her right camera left, her right arm, she just looks cold. It looks like it's going a little blue, probably, you know, from the water, the, the light contamination or whatever, but it just leans to that little bit of cold. So I would work on bringing that warm tone up a little bit on her skin and then maybe do a little softening, not too much. Don't go crazy. That would help. The other thing on, on this image, and it feels a little lopsided to me in that you have a lot of space camera left. So it, it feels to me like it needs to be, to be cropped a little bit more like, I know you don't want to lose the hair. So something maybe more like that. I don't think that that extra space on the left is adding anything to your image. So I'm a big fan of when I look at my images, if it's not adding anything to it, I try to get rid of it, minimalize it, remove it. The other, the other aspect of this image, and you know, I love her face and I love that, that sullen look is that the light is camera left and a little high, which means it's gonna hit her forehead first and it's gonna taper off as it goes down her body. That's fine. However, um, you know, come in and do a little bit of a little bit of work on the highlights, like on her forehead, you know, bring those down a little bit, like on this shoulder, maybe on her chest right there, just a bit, a tiny bit, like on the cheeks. We want to keep that glow going, but just enough so that her forehead isn't brighter than the rest of her face. And that's just really, that's just like the sophisticated portrait lighting. Um, is really controlling that light as it hits your subject's face and deciding like, I really want to accentuate the cheekbone. She's got the makeup on to bring out her cheekbones and things. So don't make her forehead the brightest, like bring the forehead down. It's not something that's, that's fun to do in the studio with a gobo and, you know, all that stuff, but man, doing it in post is super easy, you know, especially raw. You can just bring the highlight down. And I'm just going to suggest that when you're editing your images, whether you're whatever raw editor you're using, think about the exact element of that image that you want to fix. So for example, and I can't show you because I don't have a raw file, but if you want to fix the highlight on her forehead, don't use the exposure slider. Use the highlights and the whites because that's the range that this is in, right? You don't need to muddy up the shadows and the midtones. You just want to bring some detail into the highlights. So only work there. So other than that, I, I, this is this is great. This is this is a good direction to go. I love that. I love that look, and I think you can get a a, a pretty decent score out of this if it's kind of cropped and tight. And I like the presentation. I think the key line and that. Um, turquoise dark background that kind of matches the like the pool water or whatever i think that's great i think that leans into it so good job all right let's look at this one okay what did i do okay so i i like this right out of the box um you know i'm i'm low to mid 80s on this the reason that I wouldn't go higher is because there's just not a lot happening in the shot. And I know that sounds, I know that sounds like trivial, right? But it's this wonderful face and with her hands kind of hanging on the mask, that's really kind of it. There's not a lot of, you know, excitement going on in this image. So it's hard for judges to go higher on things like that. So that doesn't mean that you don't deserve a good score for it. It's a beautiful image, 
but how is this interesting or how is this invoking an emotion? She's not smiling. She's got a, you know, a flat expression kind of thing. I think an image like this where she's maybe her head slightly tilted, she's winking at the camera, you know, being kind of cheeky or something like that. I think those kind of things tend to get better scores. Maybe not something that 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 senior, I'm, I'm guessing, oh yeah, it says senior. The, the senior may not buy that, right? That may not be what they're going for. But at the same time, it's fun. Um, and it shows personality. And I think that connects with the judges, you know, that personality. So um, that being said, uh, I love the hatchet lighting. I think the hatchet lighting is is fantastic. You know, using that on the on the helmet and then getting light inside the the face, without creating some really dramatic shadows. To me, big kudos uh, for doing that. So whether whether you did it naturally or you you some Photoshop magic to make that work, I can't really tell. So it's a big win. So I'm I'm giving points for that right away because it's working. Where I struggled, two, two parts on this, is I can see, what, even without zooming in, I can see that you did quite a bit of work on the eyes. And what, what gives that away for me, and I'll zoom in a little bit, what gives that away is the, the really bright areas in here around the iris are kind of brought up a little bit more than like what they are over here. So there's a halo right in here that feels unnatural. Now, to be fair, oops, I changed the exposure. To be fair, it may, it, that may be completely natural. But again, we want the judges to be happy. And if, if it looks like it was manipulated or it looks like it may not be completely natural, I would, I would make sure that I was careful with that. I don't know. I mean, I can't tell you. It just feels to me like the eyes have been worked. I say that to, to you guys here, but as a judge, I wouldn't say that out loud because I can't qualify it. I can't say, oh, I can see this thing happening. But in my mind, I'm like, I feel like the eyes are worked a little too much. Um, so I know, that's, I know that's hard to look at. I, I can't give you an exact answer, right? But let me show you a little trick to do with eyes. So you can do this. Well, it's better to do this in the raw or like in Photoshop. Oh, you know what? Let me reset that because I know I'm going to break it. Uh, we'll create a new layer. Here we go. Very, very, very simple. All we're going to do is we're going to bring up a little bit of the bottom of the iris right there. And you got to be careful because if you do this too much, it will look fake. There we go. All right, let me zoom out. So now just the eyes pop just the tiniest little bit. Less is more when you do this because man, if you go too far, it literally looks weird. Um, but it really just brings color into those eyes. Okay. And then the only other thing that I did is I burned down the hands. So see the hands here? versus the hands here. Again, this is one of those scenarios, the hands are actually physically closer to the, to the light source. So they tend, to, they tend to be brighter, right? Um, another thing when we talk about like hands and arms and stuff, the, the inside of our arms are always brighter than the tops of our arms. So we need to be aware of that. That's not a situation here, but I'm just, I'm just pointing out, you know, we wanna watch for those things. So, but I really like, I really like this shot a lot. I think that it, it can go a long way. This image, um, I'm not a fan of flat. However, I, as a judge, I try to, to remove myself from that style prison, if you will, because the bias is, is all mine. So I say that though, so just understand some judges may not like, you know, the flat tones. With that said, I really like this image. I mean, I'm, I'm already like at an 85. I think that it's, I think it's really great. Um, 
what what would keep me from going higher is his jersey is wrinkled so i can't see his number so that's one of those things like i i need to see that whole number right so the jersey needs to be pulled down so i can see the whole number that's that's something that's easy to fix um the background his background and the edge of the the matting i would like to see some tonality difference so I would take the mat on the outside down so it doesn't feel like it's the same background all the way through. That's just my personal preference. I like, I like the separation. It may not make a big difference to the judges at all. And the only other suggestion would be it looks like he wears a watch or something on his right hand because right at his wrist um, right here, there's a, it's a brighter this band, this area right here looks brighter. Whether that's something he wore or it just happens to look like that. If you look at the his his left wrist, camera right, and his right wrist, camera left, they should they make the match, right? Just burn that down ever so slightly so that it's not something a judge can pick on. That's how we're doing, right? <laughs> just I'm giving you nothing to be picky about. Uh, the same thing on his right bicep. That is that hot spot right there is a little bit hotter than it probably needs to be. I think that when you're dealing with you know shape and form and especially muscularity, it's nice to have those highlights to to show shape and things. And I think you got like in his left arm. I think that's really really great. <clears throat> so get get those to balance a little bit more, especially when your your light source is camera right. And then you have this bright bicep camera left. Just kind of get that, that balance in there a little bit. Very subtle. Otherwise, I, I love his expression. I don't know what you did to get that expression. Um, he's got that little tiny smirk, it looks like, or a little tiny smile, which I love that. I think that's great. Um, this would also be one of those kind of images where uh, that little technique of bringing up his eyes just a tad. Let me see if we can get it to work in here. Because one of the things that we wanna make sure that we do is when we do portraits is that we really watch the eyes because we have control, right? Like the, the assumption is that we have control over those over that lighting. Okay, so I'll pull that back. And that's gonna be really subtle, but we go from these the eyes that are black to eyes that have a little bit of light in them. Catch light's perfect, his hair is great. Um, you know, the smile, the lighting, you know, your lighting is really good. So, so you did a really great job. So there, if you wanna get extra picky, which I know we all wanna be extra picky, take that piece of hair out right here. It's just one of those kind of things that we just don't want the judges to see. So I would take that out. It doesn't need to be there. I don't know what's on the other side, but I would clean all that stuff up. Like even this little fuzz on his ears, um, you can get, if you getting super picky now is like, you've got like a, there's a, there's a little hair right there, a little bit there, these little tiny wisps. Don't make his head brown like a, like a, like a helmet, right? Just, just, trim the edges of these off a couple little tiny ones in there and then like make sure those eyebrows are okay yep yep and that <laughs> i think your judges are going to pick on you for that uh the number the number not being straight but even so i think that the i think that the image is a is a great is a great portrait Great feedback. Can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah, of course. I had um, someone's images did not end up in the OneDrive. And so I had them email them directly to you right now. So okay. when we take a break, I don't know, you think we should go for maybe 20 more minutes and then take a little, or how many more images do we have? Are we at the end? We're not at the end, are we? Uh, we have we have oh. basically two, two more images. Oh. Okay. Well, then I don't know when. Um, you let me know when you want to take a break and look at those and bring them up if you can. 
And this person said you can be really tough on those ones that got emailed. <laughs> um, look, I don't need I, I don't need a break. You guys make the call. I got yeah. I got her email here. I don't think my images made it in there either. Oh, you didn't, Osea? Oh no. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see them. If there's only two more left, I mine are not there. So Troy, can Osea email hers to you too? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm gonna put your e your email in the chat then, and then go ahead and do that, Osea. I'm so sorry. Okay, thank Yannick, you. I'll just I'll just forward the same email. I guess Yannick, he didn't get um he didn't get them, so if he doesn't he can't say, oh, I'm not gonna put them in if he doesn't know he didn't get them. So I don't know what happened. So yeah, and I sent him yeah I sent him another email asking if he had received them, and I didn't hear anything back from him. Huh, that's interesting. Okay. Let me send you, I'm gonna post it right now. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, okay, sorry, I'll be quiet now, go ahead. No, Carry do you wanna, do you guys need a break? Do you guys wanna take a break? I could use a five minute bathroom break, but I don't need much more than that. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> All right, five minutes, guys. Are you, did you type it already? I don't see it. <sighs> Melanie, I really like the expression of your football player's face. It looked really good. Okay. Oh, oh. My oh, no. Melanie, yeah. You're not muted, but you don't have any audio. Okay. <laughs> but Melanie has no audio. What's up with that? Okay, I'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll sit here and talk about you. Oh, it's recorded, so we can't. But I'll, I yeah, can we pause. have a lot to talk about, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> I can pause the recording, right? Should I? Yeah, I can do it. Here, you want me to do it? Sure. Okay, you do it. Yeah, I don't want to be responsible for that. Okay. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Oh no, we got to stop talking about Michelle. Okay. Shh. <laughs> But I love what you said, Troy, that sometimes what we what we would love, our style and our clients love, and they really do, when you're doing a competition, you find that you're editing a tiny bit different because like you said, they're looking, they are looking, it's not like you in particular want to do that, but they are looking at that sort of thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. I got I got some more images coming through. Let me get those into the folder. Um, so Melanie, what software do you use to edit? I mean, are you using Lightroom? Lightroom and Photoshop, both. Okay. okay. So what I what I would suggest that you do is take the style that you have, create a preset that creates that look. Right. Mm -hmm. And then as you're going through, <clears throat> as you're going through and you're playing with your images, um, you can always apply it. Like I have one that I created called old grit. And so I just applied it to here and you do the same thing in Lightroom. And then you can just change the opacity on that. Mm -hmm. And you can be like, oh, because like this image would benefit from that too. Right. Now it feels, now this image feels more old world. Uh, it feels less, a little bit less today and a little bit more yesterday. Like this could be his grandpa's, you know, portrait because right, it's right. kind of flat. This is, this is nice and stark and contrasty and, you know, so, and that's one of the things that I do is if I'm working on an image that I want to play with is I open up my styles and I know you can do this in Lightroom. So I'm kind of showing you, um, those are my brushes. Here we go. And I can, I can hover over some of these images and I can be like, yeah, no, like, mm -hmm. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that? And then, and then you can kind of play with it. And then play with it inside of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind yeah, of what I did with the other one, with the, the arm, the football one. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Cool. Thank uh, you. Let me double check. Um, okay. So I got that one. I got the pair and then we had three. She sent me three. Yeah. Illustrator. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Did you get them? I, I yes, sent I did. multiple messages to you. I just didn't know which email address would work. 
I got them. I got them. Yeah, they just came in. So yeah, you can uh, ignore the multiple versions. Okay. Yeah, I got Thanks. them. Okay. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna jump over to this guy. Um, so I I really don't have a lot that I would say to do to this image. I mean, 99% of this, this is there. I think it's a very, very, very strong portrait. Um, but so right away, I'm looking at it, you know, I'm going to be in the low to mid eighties. And one of the big reasons why is it's a very traditional portrait. And I, you know, I'm not going to make excuses that, that if, you know, that if, he was on fire, I would give it more points because that makes it more unique. So you've just got to realize that, you know, there are some images that they don't by themselves carry a huge amount of uniqueness and weight that are going to make the judges go, oh, yes, that's a, that's a 90, right? This is a very traditional senior portrait that every professional should be able to create. Um, that doesn't mean you don't deserve some kudos for that, but that's kind of how most judges are going to look at this image. So a couple little, couple little things on this image. Um, the, the balance within the frame is kind of off. So he's, he's very, he's a lot, he's a lot closer to the bottom than he is anywhere else in the frame. There's no reason why he shouldn't be centered in the frame, left and right, top and bottom. So there's, I think there's too much chair. So you could crop that chair off. So uh, let me get into here again. Okay. So I know I'm cropping out your presentation. So, but you can, you can play with that a little bit. If you want to keep that much chair in, add some more space to camera left. Now, I would personally, I would prefer a looser crop than a tighter crop, but I'm going with something something like that within the frame. So his head is in the upper third, but he's got this nice breathable space around his body within, within the frame, right? I think, I think that helps a lot. And again, this is like a couple points to, to some judges are gonna look at that. Uh, let me reset that. The other, the other couple little things is one, the pose. So the pose is, is very stagnant. And the way that you could have improved this pose ever so easily was to have him move his right elbow out to his right knee. So what would have happened is, is that would have brought his right shoulder to camera a little bit. He would have tilted and it would have also dropped his right shoulder ever so slightly. So what you do is, is you set him up on this pose. It's really simple, right? Um, I don't know his name, but let's just say his name is Tony. And you're like, Tony, that's great. Okay, so just move that right elbow towards your right knee just a little bit for me. Keep your eyes right here. And what he's going to do is he's going to try to think about what you said. And he's going to kind of twist his body a little bit. And that's going to add a little bit more dyn dyno dy dynamism. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to give his body a little bit less of a rigid pose. Again, that's going to help you in some of your points. Um, and then a couple other little things is this area is brighter than it should be. This area is brighter than it should be. So this lower right corner is a trap. The light should fall off on that chair to, to sort of a little bit darker darkness. And then you've got um, the light source, which is great. I like the lighting on his face. That's wonderful. But this area of his, of his uh, suit is too bright. So if we just burn that down, let me see, let me go take off the notes, right? So just looking at, just looking at his jacket, see you burn it down just a tiny bit. I didn't do the chair in the corner because I didn't see it before, but I see it now. Um, it's just burning that down a little bit, brings more focus to his face and it feels more intentional, right? More, more of a professional style. Something to consider, is, you know, we've all been to, to studios, I mean, studios where we've all been to, to museums and galleries and we've seen paintings, right? Like, I can't imagine a painter intentionally painting hot spots in the corner on the chair or, or painting, you know, the front of his suit and stuff brighter 
thing. Like I, I can't imagine that they would do that, right? Without without purpose, right? Um, so something to think about. It just, but especially in the PPA bubble, you've got to watch where that light is going. Right. You've lost a little control of the light. The light spilled over a little bit. So that's it. I mean, those are really. Oh, sorry. Troy, I have a question for you. I don't do portraits, but I was just curious um, in the formal portrait, are you supposed to center people? Because you were moving him left to right and kind of top to bottom. And I always thought that you were supposed to have, for example, more room in front of him. So you would have more room on the left. But again, I don't know the rules for portraits. Uh, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't necessarily put more room in front of him because he's not moving. So okay. the the argument is, you know, if an object is moving, you got to give it space to go. Um, also, you want to give um, an image sort of space to breathe. So this kind of image would look good with a little more space in front of him and below him. So it feels like there's room in front of him that he's looking into. It, you don't want it to feel like he's tight and constrained in the space. So I thought you were um, trying to center him though, left to right. I, I, I was, oh. I, what I was trying to do is, is show that there's too much space on the right of the frame and not oh, enough space okay. Okay, on, got the, it. on the bottom. On the left, yeah. okay, in the bottom. Okay, yeah. thanks. Of course, yeah. And so here's, here's something that you can do. Um, this might be a little, I don't know if this will work, but let's just try this. So, let me see. I'm going to bring this into Photoshop. I know how all this stuff works. I really do. I mean, I do this stuff. Uh, okay, here we go. It's just when people are watching and we're recording and we're streaming and, you know, all that stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to put this on a mat. So we're going to do a new. That's 4,000 by 4,000. Um, this is how I mat all my stuff. Okay, I'm gonna drag that, put that in there. Okay, and I'm gonna free transform it. Now, one of the things that you can do is you don't have to put the, the image big and you don't have to put the image in the center. Oh no. So imagine that you did, imagine you did something like that. Let me put a little stroke on it. There we go. Let's take that to white so it stands out a little bit. Okay. So to me, that image works, even though he's tight within the photographic pixely frame, right? But in the entire image as it's presented, now he's got more space to the left. He's got more space below him. He feels supported and he feels like he has room to move. So this is a technique that you can add to your image. So get your image to breathe as much as possible. And then when you put it on a mat like this, don't be afraid to use space around it. Um, if you guys have been, I haven't been to PPA in years, but I, I used to go to WPPI all the time. You see a lot of matting like this. You see, you know, big mats with little images in them. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay. You can do that. Also, it's a great way to hide detail that you don't want the judges to see because you made the image smaller. So sometimes that might be something you want to do. But anyway, I think this image benefits from uh, a crop like that versus just, you know, something with a traditional frame all the way around it. So like that, no, well, not like that, like that. If we went to that, hopefully you can see the before and after. So try it. Judges may hate it. I would love it. <laughs> so if I if I happen to be a judge at one of them and you show images like that, like this, I'm going to be like, ooh, that's very creative. I love the space you've given them. <laughs> but those are judges. OK. Uh, Melody, do you have any questions on that before we go to the next one? No, that was great. As soon as you did that, you could see because I felt like his knee, his right knee seems tight in the way I cropped it. And then when you put it in there, now it now I don't feel like it's kind of butting up against it. Right. And 
I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody that can use all kinds of technical terms and tell you studies about how the human brain works and how, how humans, I mean, we read the images from the top left and we go down through the right because that's how we read pages and books. But what's important is how it feels. And if it feels like he's constrained in a space, do what you can do to make him not feel constrained in a space. Mm -hmm. And he's like right. a big kid too. You can tell that he's bulky, yeah. sort of put him in a tight space. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Very good. Cool. Great Thank image, you. by the way. Yeah. Very Thank good. you. So, okay. So this one is uh, sighting in the turret at sunrise. Now this is, this is an image that the title will maybe make sense to somebody who knows where this is. Um, I mean, I've probably been there, but I didn't know it was called the turret. So and it's a mouthful for somebody to read. So I'm not saying don't use that title, but I'm saying be considerate of that title. Um, this is another one of those images, um, I'm guessing maybe by the same maker because of the border, the sort of the, the partial bleed. I, I'm personally not a fan of that. I, again, like I said before, I think it really takes away from your image. <clears throat> and this, this is really more of an image competition and not about that map. So, um, what I would do is uh, I would be careful of that. Now, I, I can't say <clears throat> that this image was dropped in. It doesn't look like it was dropped in, but what it does look like is that there was um, some telltale signs, and I'm only gonna zoom in because I can still see it anyway, is we have these halos. See the halo between the rock and the sky? Now, sometimes we get those when they're dropped in. Uh, but most often we get those, and I can see the edges here, we have this sort of black line. Normally that occurs when clarity or dehaze or, you know, of those nature is pushed too far. Yep, uh, that was the problem. Yeah. Um, and they, st they stand out to me because um, I spent a lot of money on printing a 60 inch print. And then I noticed all my halos and it made me mad because I had to spend another $1,200 and buy another image. And I had to fix it, so I don't I don't forget those very easy. These are very easy to fix, by the way, if you wanted to keep them in there. Um, I mean, not, not keep them in there. I'm sorry, but if you wanted to keep what you've done to the image, they're very easy to fix. And I'll just show you really quick. Um, but it's still one of those. It's still one of those examples that you know less is more. So be really careful. But if you're using if you're using Photoshop. Uh, one of the best things to do is use the clone stamp tool, change the blend mode to darken, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to grab from the lighter side. It's like the rocks are the darker. This is the lighter side. And the halo, right, is lighter than everything. So I'm literally going to clone from next to it, and I'm just going to darken. And it's not going to affect the rocks, right, because the rocks are darker than where I'm cloning from. And it's going to do a good job of matching. So that's a really easy way to get rid of those halos. And then it, it's, it's more natural. But another way is to just not push the editing too far. Um, let me zoom out on this guy. So I, I love this image. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's really wonderful. But one of the things I'm really struggling with is, is uh, let me make sure I reset it. I didn't flatten it. Okay is there's i'm not drawn into the image by light right like the path isn't brighter than the rocks and you know the clouds are amazing and the format is amazing but use use dodging and burning techniques to bring me into the scene so one i would crop the the edge off and i would make it black so to me right away that image just jumps off the page and then what i did was is is i i burned down the foreground a tad right but then the rock, the main rock in here, which is really, I see that as the hero, not the sunset. So what I did is I just brought up the, the mid-tones or the highlights in the rock, which I've, I've been to these rocks. I know those colors tend to pop, right? So bring that out. And so now you have this image that here it's kind of flat. We're not really, we don't see any depth in the image. We don't really see a hero. We're not drawn in to an image like this, where I feel the black border makes the color saturate more. And then you bring out sort of the highlights in the rock, 
now, now that now to me, that image has a lot more depth and it has a lot more, uh, it's, it's much more vibrant, right? So, uh, play with that a little bit. I really, but I, I really like this image. And I think that you're, I mean, as you submitted it, you might get into the low eighties, but I think with a little tweak and adjustment, um, you can definitely get into the, into the eighties, mid to low eighties for sure. Got it. Thanks. Of course. Okay. So let's, um, let's go over here. Okay. Um, so I haven't seen this one before. Really like this a lot. Um, the 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 wonderful thing about this image to me you know just right off the right off the bat is that you know the lettuce the head of whatever that is 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 brighter so it's really drawing me in there i do feel it's a little hot and i would like to see it toned down a bit so that it has some more more shape to the entire object not just the texture within the leaves itself and you have a, a lot of extra space on the right side of the frame um, not a lot, but you do have some that I don't think you need, unless you're trying to keep it square. You don't really need to do that. So we could we could do a crop something something like that. Somewhere in there, yeah. But I, I you know, other than maybe burning down some of the these foreground elements to really focus us on the. Um, Hang on, here we go. The brightness, there it goes. So I think that some of these foreground objects are a little bit hotter than they need to be, just a tad. But I do love this image. I will tell you that even just the way that it came came up, first off, I really like it. But I might I might work on, well, that's not going to look great because there we go. Try to get some more shape and form inside of there. But even the way that even the way that you presented it. Um, you know, I, I would be at a solid mid to high eighties on something like this. I think it's beautiful. And it really speaks to the idea that sometimes simple is going to score better because it's simple and this isn't super complicated. Right. Um, so I really like that. So I hope that, I hope that helps. And definitely presentation, please do a presentation. Um, the judges are going to, are going to care. They're going to really care that you did a presentation. All right, let's jump over here. This is interesting too. I like this. Um, I wonder, my brain always does this. Maybe. This is, I, I like this one in color. Um, first and foremost, I think that you've got this really wonderful composition. I think you're already, you know, getting into sort of the fine art element of this. I, I feel like the, pair has been composited into this subject matter because I'm not seeing any shadows. So I'm struggling with there's no shadow down here where I think that there should be a shadow that I'm not seeing. Um, and then you have this other element over here on this edge that I think is too bright. So bringing that down, making sure that you have a, a shadow in there is going gonna, is gonna to really help. The other thing is too, and it's it's hard for me to see, but I'll zoom in to try to get a better sense. Yeah, that's what I thought. See this area right here? It looks like there's a little um, masking error right here. And the edge of the pear is sharper than it probably should be. It it should have a little bit of edge softness to that. So I'm guessing that's just that this entire pear was masked. Um, if you take a picture of like this pair, for example, just put it against like an 80% gray and, and photograph it, even at a high uh, aperture, the very, very edges are going to have the tiniest little bit of light fall off or softness or something. And that's going to help us buy into the reality, right? That it's, that it's, that it's actually there. But it's a really fun image. I really like this. I'm I'm probably mid to low 80s as I look at it and see some things that I would like to fix. Um, let me just try. See if we were able to burn, burn down some of this. That helps. 
and then I can't really do it in here, but this should have in this area right here, there should be a shadow from that pair. Yeah, something like that. And then just blur those edges. That's a cool shot though. It's a lot of fun. And then what else did we have? Thank you. Doing? Yeah, of course. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm happy to explain, but I, I like the direction. No, those are good. These are good suggestions. Um, yeah, I'll blur the edges a little too. Uh, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes you know, you can get a judge who doesn't see those things, and they won't say anything. And great, you, you got away with it. I, I have an image that I replaced the sky in and two of the judges thought it was gorgeous. One of the judges thought it was horrible because they were really good at compositing skies. And they were like, yeah, this is wrong. That light's going the wrong way. And <laughs> I was like, damn it. Why did, why did they have to know? Okay, let's, let's look at, um, let's go here. This is a this is a really fun. This is a really beautiful shot. I think that I think that this is an image that will merit um, merit moderately well. Um, I think our key line is a is a bit bold. I know it's kind of small, but I would take it down. This feels like a like a five or eight or ten pixel key line, um, but I would take it down to like a three. I, I you know you just really barely want something in there. Um, I think an image like this, you, you know, you're going to have a good chance of scoring into the mid to low 80s. And you're going to wonder, well, why wouldn't I get higher? And I think part of it is because judges have seen these scenes quite often. And that's not fair to you, the maker, but that's kind of what happens. Um, also, it's a beautiful scene, right? It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful landscape and it's, it's really worth, you know, having this image. However, where, where is my primary and secondary hook, my foreground, my middle ground, my background? Um, that's always the challenge with, with, you know, some of these beautiful images, you know, beautiful sunset, the city's lit up, great perspective, but how is this going to set this image apart, you know? And that's hard. So I think I, there's really nothing I can do to this image that I think would improve it. I think it's all, it's all wonderful. I'm just sort of speaking to the idea that I think that in a competition, um, you know, it's going to have a ceiling, the, the score, it's going to have a ceiling and that's going to be in the, in the probably mid to low eighties. So fix that key line out if that'll help, but um, I do like it a lot. Okay. This is really nice. This is a, this is another one of those images, you know, that that we see a lot of landscapes, and landscapes just like portraits need to be lit, and this image loses interest the deeper we go into the frame. So the foreground has good contrast; it looks sharp. The deeper we go into the scene, it tends to lose that contrast, and then the, the sky doesn't really have any detail in there. And there isn't really a primary subject in in this image, right? Like like you know, like light scraping across the rocks, or you know, a road that's winding through there that we can grab, or a river or something. Um, it's a really beautiful landscape. How it's going to play out in image competition, I just don't think that this image is going to score very high. Um, and primarily because we just don't have a primary hook. We don't have a primary subject that makes us be like, oh, I want to stand there. It doesn't mean it's not a beautiful image and well executed and well presented. Um, I think from an image conference standpoint, it's going to struggle a little bit. And there's not a whole lot I can tell you what to do to this image. To be honest, you've done it. I mean, you've captured it. It's great. It's gorgeous. Um, enter it. Can I say something? I know, I know this, this goes into uh, landscape, but the truth of the matter is this is in an area where those rock formations and there are these ancient monasteries on top. And uh, you can see some of them like on the right side in the back in front of the mountains. 
Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right there. They're built on top of the rocks. This is a place called Meteora in, in Greece. And I, I struggled with it. I mean, it wasn't really about the landscape. It was about conveying these structures on, on top of the rocks. But I don't know how, how I can bring them out. I know they disappear into the landscape and they get totally lost. But it really wasn't about the landscape. Yeah, and uh, you know, thanks for telling for for bringing that up because that's one of the struggles that you're going to have with the judges is they I didn't even I didn't even see those buildings in there. I know. Um, and that's that's kind of that's kind of unfortunate, right? Um, but that's kind of the struggle. So I don't know if if you have uh, the resolution in this image to you know push in a little bit. I think that. You know, like this this area right here is so wonderful. Um, I, and here I can clearly see I can clearly see the buildings in there now, mm -hmm. right? So if we're able to to push in a little bit tighter, and then think about like lighting and um, other elements, you know, so maybe what we could do is I don't think I can do it in here. I was going to say um, let's increase our contrast just a tad. And then if we bring up just the buildings themselves, I don't know if that's gonna work the way, yeah, maybe. This is gonna be kind of harsh. I'm not really doing a good job. It's okay. It was an HDR, by the way. There's plenty of resolution in this image. Oh, okay. So, so, so you may have you may have some of the resolution that's in there, but 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 see, like right away now, when I look at this image, I've got yeah. this wonderful foreground layer. I've got that mid layer where they're at, and I've got the background. Yeah, um, I like the tighter crop. Thank you. One of the other things that you can do, and let's see if I can if I can uh, illustrate this properly, but um, let's say that I put in a linear gradient, okay, mm -hmm. and I defocus. I can't really defocus it in here. Let's see if I can get the structure down. That'd be, yeah, it's, you can do it much better in Photoshop. So what you can do is you can actually blur that foreground area that you might see where see where that like the here we go like where that red is, and then what you do is you you create you create middle ground foreground middle ground and background using a focus point. So the foreground can be slightly out of focus, um, or slightly darker. And then that leads us into the middle ground, which is where the buildings are. And then you've got your background. Right, so, right. And almost it, like a tilt shift, right? Yeah, yeah, almost like a tilt shift. But you're drawing, you're drawing the maker's eyes by using the the highlights and the shadows, right, right. throughout the throughout the image. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Re, I mean, now that you pointed those out, I'm like, man, I really, I really want to see those in there even more. <laughs> um, and maybe even the even in the bigger version. Let me see. Did I can I see both of those? Yeah, maybe even in the in the full frame. Um, let me reset that. There you go. See, maybe just maybe just brightening up the buildings mm -hmm. and bringing some of the rest of the landscape down around them. Mm -hmm. See, because they they pop right, like right here, they tend to pop a little bit better, and they tend to come out at me, and I see them now. Yeah. And then spend some time and burn down some other stuff that doesn't that doesn't need the attention. So, thank you. You definitely got a wonderful image here, and I and I will tell you that there are world class photographers, world class images. I'm not going to mention any names. That if you saw the original, and you saw their final, it would blow your mind. So, okay. don't be afraid to get in there and push those pixels around. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep working on it. I yeah. I think that's it, right? Did I get everything? Uh, there was one more, but that's OK. Um, uh, oh, the barn. Yeah, yeah. The barn. I've seen this before. This was in uh, your competition. Yeah. <laughs> ah, I've seen it. Yeah. Um, I remember this one. So just, just real quick, I, I like it. I like the image. I like the image a lot. I think what I would do is I would crop it a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, because I feel like I, I like, I know that the field over here is beautiful, but mm -hmm. 
putting the putting the 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 truck dead center doesn't really work for me. So really, what I think the way I see this is is this is a picture of the barn, and the fields just happen to be there, right? If you wanted to photograph the fields, I would have gotten in the fields. I would have gotten lower, move the barn out of focus, way in the back, um, and then then take out the take out the power lines. You know, it's so funny. I was just going to ask you about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know we realize it's the modern age and they need electricity and internet, mm. but you know, <laughs> let's yeah. not have oh, it on our horizon, yeah, right? Let's yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll go in there and take that out. <laughs> So, thank you. All right. really? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How'd we do? How'd we do, Michelle? That was great. Oh, we did. You did good. Yeah. We've got some talent in this group, don't we? You have got some amazing talent. Yes. Yes, you do. And I have so much content that I'm not even going to be able to get to. But, yeah. Does anybody have any questions for Troy that? Anything you didn't cover, anything that you disagree with or you agree with, or? Especially if you disagree. Yeah, I wanna hear that. No, I think all your critiquing is, um, well, I don't think fair is the word, but it's just right on. And I mean, definitely room for growth. You know, we can, even when you think there's an amazing, looking at other people's photos too, I was just, you know, guessing on what you were going to say and how, what I would do with them. And um, I was pretty good. You said everything I would have. <laughs> <laughs> good. I can't. I, I, can't. I, I know Go this on. you mentioned a lot, but I really love the fact that you emphasize looking at uh, painters work and how they use light to their advantage. I think we forget about it a lot in photography because we don't really have control over it in a lot of instances, especially out in nature or right. in photojournalism or, you know, candid captures, but uh, it, it's really important to, to dodge and burn. It, it is. And, and I think that more importantly now than, you know, maybe 10 years ago is that the post-processing is actually part of the creative process. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't see my creative process stopping. Well, the in interesting camera. thing about all of this, and that is, I, don't, I, I think some people, you know, like to think that, oh, I've captured it in camera and that's the way that's, that's where it ends, right? I'm a purist. Wow. I'm going to do that. But in, but in reality, I think that today the canvas is Photoshop, right? And I'm bringing in my subject matter with my camera and I get the best I can in camera. And then I use Photoshop to take it even further. Yeah. And um, I, I, you know, I would like to think, and I'm, I think it would be true, is that you know the the greats like Ansel Adams and Edward Westons, and you know those classic artists that did everything on on paper and then manipulated them as far as they could, they would embrace some of those things as well. I mean, you know, Ansel Adams at the Especially end of his life was, Adams, yeah. was very excited about digital. You know, so take advantage of that, you know? We have a, we have a comment in the chat and um, Nancy said, I loved how you showed using the light to make the hero of the shot show so well. Yeah. Yes. yes. You're very welcome. Thank you for the comments. Yeah, really good. Thanks for spending all this time. I know we talked about it when you were the judge last time. So it was really nice of you. Thank you. Did anybody yeah. cry? What's that? Yeah, no one cried. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh I could have. He said, "Make them cry. We're gonna make them cry." I could have pushed wait, harder. I'm, gonna, oh, I'm yeah. gonna wait till I go to bed and think about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah. No, don't do that. Um, Anyways, one thing uh, I appreciate Troy you spending your time with us. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, mm -hmm. one one thing that I would really suggest that that everybody do is I'm talking to them. Go look at classic mm -hmm. photographers, not not photographers today, right? Because we feel like we're competing with them because we all have the access to the same thing. Go look at classic photographers. You know, if you're a landscape photographer, go look up, you know, Galen Rowell and and some of the early grades. If if you're doing abstract or fine art or you're doing stuff, you know, look up Edward Weston and look up Ansel Adams and just 
dig through those really, really old images. And I think there is an amazing amount of inspiration. Um, Vivian Mayer, her street photography. Yeah. Um, just look at those things and go, man, if, if, if she just had a digital camera, what we could do on top of that, right? You know, so yeah, go look at that, go look at that stuff. I, I look up stuff all the time. I have libraries full of images. I thought of something. Um, let's talk a little bit about like what you said about the judges for different competitions and to know your judges and know your competition you're entering. Like, okay, when I go to enter WPPI, I think, okay, they don't have the same rules about hands and they're a little more artistic over at WPPI than they are at PPA. Um, and you, I think you had said something about um, the stroke line or something. And oh, you know, I can't remember, it was in the very beginning. Do you remember when we were talking about that? I and have no said idea. Something like, oh, I think you said, I don't count down for the stroke on a local level. But I think right. we have such high talent in our group and I keep trying to encourage them to, they need to keep growing beyond our San Diego. Like they need to enter other competitions, enter PPC, enter district and IPC. But at that level, they do care. It, it's, yes. it's funny too, because I half of me thinks the matting is just so dumb. When you enter WPPI, you don't put a mat on it at all. And that's where I started was WPPI. But then I came over to PPA and they're like, you have to have a presentation and, and it's such a big deal. But I guess if it's a big deal within that particular competition, because I've seen judging at IPC where the, the, the mat and the stroke just broke it. Like yep. they, they wouldn't merit because they did not like the presentation. So what, do you, what, do, what should we share with our group on that? Cause I know you said, oh, at a local level, you're not, I, I don't either when I'm judging, I would never take somebody out of the merit level. I don't wanna say never, but the presentation has to be pretty bad for me to not merit it if the image is worthy. So, and, and that's that is that is such a great question, and it is such a great challenge because um, you know, as as a leader in our communities and at our affiliates, I, I'm trying to encourage members to move up through the ranks and get better with their with their images and and go on to state and go on to national and then go on to other peripheral competitions, right? Because that's great. Um, but the thing is, is that it's not a linear path. Uh, every competition is going to have its own nuances and every competition is going to have its own issues. And the best that I can suggest is that you, that you look at a lot of the images in those competitions and decide how your work fits in. Okay. I'm a wedding photographer. I will not enter at WPPI because I don't think they care about the bride or the groom. They don't care about the fact that it's on a wedding day. It is 99% Photoshop. If you go and you look at those images, they will have, you, you have to have a minimum square inches. I think it used to be a minimum of 80 square inches in your image. So they, they, they have them, like if they submit them physically, they're on a mat that's 16 by 20 with an with a eight by 10 image and they have rice sized bride and grooms in there. And these are images that are winning competitions. Now there is no way, there is no way you can see the lighting on that bride or groom with the expression. I am aware of their rules. I am aware of, of their competition. So I stay away because I'll be frustrated, right? Um, so learn that competition. PPA, they have broken out to, they have a wedding uh, uh, master's category now. Um, I don't know their thinking behind that, but when I was competing, uh, it was another, it's a Photoshop competition. It didn't matter that I shot a wedding on a wedding day. Um, you know, I was competing with people that had world-class Photoshop skills and they were compositing stuff that I could never hope to compete against. So I chose not to enter there. So you've got, to, you've got to sort of look at where you're competing and decide. I, I did compete enough to get my master's, um, but then I stopped because, because <laughs> I, I can't. I just, I can't, I can't do it because I, sh I, 
I create work that I, that I shot on a wedding day, I am not going to compete against somebody that built the image. That's not fair. I don't think it's fair. Do they have rules? It's interesting. I think they it's have rules now of certain wedding categories that cannot be manipulated. I don't know. I don't know PPA's current rules. I know that at the time that I was entering, at, shortly after my master's, I was continuing to enter. And when I was earning my master's, I was competing against a gentleman that is a Photoshop master. And I can't win. I can't win against that. Why would I, why would I compete against that? You know, yeah. that, it's not, it's not, it's just not possible. So know your category, know the rules. <clears throat> and you know enter accordingly um know the judges know what they're looking for the only way to know is to watch the competitions and then decide like is that a field that i want to get involved in because it's interesting <clears throat> i'm sorry no go ahead. go ahead it's interesting hearing you say that because that was my thought on some wedding beautiful wedding photography that I've seen but it seemed to be like it, it was exactly like you said the bride and groom were just were not the heroes were not the stars but it was these grandiose staircases and chandeliers and I mean it looked more like something that was a uh, commercial to me it was you know it was it was more commercial they were either trying to sell the building or the chandelier but not about the bride and groom yeah. Um, and I kind of wondered, but now that was probably done with the intent of the competition. So yeah, and interesting. I'm, and I'm okay with the competition, right? Like, like if, like, if you have the ability to <clears throat> true story, if you have the ability and, and you have a four hour gap between the ceremony and the reception, and you can take your couple and put them in a helicopter and fly them over the great wall of China and take shots from that. I mean, like, how, how am I going to compete with that living in Southern California? Like, I don't even get clouds, you know? I'm lucky to get clouds. So I don't get mad at it. I just like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to compete, right? Like, you guys are driving Formula One race cars. The best I have is a 69 Volkswagen. I'm not going to compete in that. I'm going to enjoy watching. But so I think, I think part of competition is just one deciding like where you can compete at because not, not all competitions are for everybody, you know, um, I can't compete at that level. It makes me crazy. <laughs> Speaking of competition, Dan, can you announce who our judges will be at our next one? Uh, yeah, I can. It's uh, Frank Salas, Michael Novo and Nancy Speaker. All right. Thank um, you. Did you guys hear that? We have that? a question from, is it Teresa? Um, yeah, Teresa. I was wondering if you could talk more about style of editing. If someone, if someone's brand falls into a matte style edit, why is this not received as well? I understand the tonal range. Uh, just trying to figure out how an artist can be true to themselves. Shouldn't we be submitting our style to improve our style? Or is this more about the game of PPA style? Um, it's a game. It's it's absolutely one hundred percent a game. Uh, I can't. I can't. I'm not. You know. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Right. Like PPA affiliates are in a bubble, and they're never going to get out of that bubble. That's what makes PPA who they are. And so, if a style doesn't work for PPA. It's never going to work. Don't, don't even try. Don't even try to push. Um, you know, my, my style tends to be a little bit more edgy, fisheye, more wide angle stuff. Not one of those images will merit. Not one. I have, to, I have to take a creative, very traditional, beautiful, thin bride, handsome groom, standing, like, that'll merit. That'll get loan. That's just the way it is. So, unfortunately. Yep. I think, I don't know. I hope they're changing a little bit. Like I've seen a, a little bit of growth with 
PPA being a little more open-minded and a little more artistically open, but I still think, yes, they have a long way to go. They, you know, and, and, and I'm, it, it sounds like I'm picking on PPA and I'm not, I'm not picking on PPA. You know, they have a niche and it's no different than Apple has a niche and Samsung has a niche and Google has a niche and Tesla has a niche. It's not like one is better than the other. Like, yeah, we could argue about that. But in reality, that's their niche. You either buy into it or you don't. Don't get upset that your work isn't accepted by that niche. Um, and, you know, it may be callous, but I hear, I hear photographers complain all the time, like, oh, they don't understand my work. Well, then don't enter it there. <laughs> it, it just don't enter it. Amen. Like, <laughs> you know, not the place. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not the place, you know, um, I have, I have lots of work that, that I can't enter because uh, at the local or state affiliates that they won't get. And, but that's, you know, you can't get, you can't get hurt over it. You got to just realize like, okay, they're just not going to understand. Is it, is it fair? Yes. In the sense that they make the rules and you want to enter their competition, you have to play by their rules. Yeah. So. I think you nailed it on the head when you said that uh, it's a game. It really is. Um, I would say 99% of the images that I enter in competition, I have created specifically for competition. Uh, oh, my, yeah. Yeah, my client work, no, would never enter it. So I'll show you, let me show you a couple images. So I, I don't create, I've never created work for competition. I always create, I always try to pull images from my work for competition, okay? Uh, this image gets an 81 in the wedding category. It's not, it's not impressive. Uh, this image doesn't even merit. Now, in the uh, wedding category, yeah, they that, don't know yeah. that I had three minutes to make this shot work because they were lining up to go out to the ceremony. They should care a little bit, but in the wedding category, they don't care. I get it. I get it. It's not, it's not super exciting. Um, why does that image get 89? It's clean. It's fun. But I think because it's different, right? Non-traditional wedding dress, feathers, things like that. This image got an 87. I got... I could have gone higher except for the judges didn't like the guy walking on the street in the background, which was kind of the whole point of that image. Um, this image gets a 78 for whatever reason, you know, I, I, I there's no pattern. I guess I'm showing you these to that, that there's, there's no pattern. Um, this is Peter Levshin's, um that got an 89. This image got a 98. Um, this image got a 90. So these images, which are like some of the, the fine art flame and some of the stuff that I do, um, they, they, rarely, they rarely merit at all because I think they're too different. So except that one, that one actually went long. So I, I, all, all styles, <laughs> right? Like you just, I'm, I was so surprised that that red hot image went lone at PPA. I did not expect that. I, that was my, that was my, that's my image. I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to see how it does. Very cool. See, if you love something, try it out. It, you got to try, you got to try. So. And remember when you get critiques from, whoever, that it's just our opinion. Uh, right, I have a question for you. What is your reason, what is your reason for, for entering critiques, competitions? So in the end, it's, it's to grow my work. It's to get better. Um, 
I think that there's, there's only a couple reasons that people enter a competition. Um, it's, it's either to improve their work, it's either to help their business or it's ego and maybe some combination of all three, but those are the primary drivers. Um, for me, I didn't start entering competition until very late in my career. So I didn't need it to drive my business. Uh, I didn't need it for my ego because I didn't care. Um, so very quickly I thought, well, I get to see what, what these other individuals who say they're great photographers are going to say about my work. And, uh, that's why I entered, I entered so that I could hear, I could hear feedback and, most of the time, I thought the feedback was wrong. Most of the time, I thought they were idiots. Um, most of the time, and I can see, was it Lisa? Is that Lisa? <laughs> she's, she's laughing at me. But here's, but here's the truth of it, right? Like, I'm, I'm just being honest with you guys, right? Like, I would, I would listen to their critiques and I would be like, oh, you, you, guys are, you guys are way off. Like, that image is way better than that. And then I would go look the judges up and I'd be like, oh, you haven't shot a wedding in your life. So, okay, scratch your comment. Uh, the next judge be like, oh, you're, you still work. You're creating images. Like, okay, well, I don't agree with you. I didn't like your comment, but you know what? You're still a working professional. Okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to take note of that one, you know? So, you know, that's what I did. <laughs> and so I learned to just like, I'm going to enter images, see what they say. I'm going to try to build images that they like. Because if I can build an image that they like, then I can build an image that a client's going to like. And that was the goal, was to kind of figure out what they like. So it was the learning, right? If I can learn what the judges like, I can figure out what a bride likes and I can make an image for her. Or I can figure out what a commercial client likes and I can make an image for them. And that was my goal. I think I think so many of us appreciate you as a judge just because uh, the, a huge thing is your honesty. And I've seen that in the, the competition nights where you don't back down, you know, if you you'll go for that challenge and it can be completely opposite, which is a really great learning experience for us, too. You know, well, so, you. yeah, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. It's very refreshing. Thank you. Yeah. Normally, normally I don't get compliments on my honesty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if you have to have a tough skin and I, I think that's the problem for a lot of people. Uh, well, some people it's like you, for me, do it for yourself. And I may agree with you and I may not agree with you and I take it for what it's worth. So, yeah. you know, I mean, yeah, that's just exactly. kind of how life is. So yeah. And, and look, ultimately, ultimately, all I want to do is I just want to, to, to push my efforts and my experience and my energy into helping somebody else move in the right direction. You know, I've been doing this for a really long time. I've been a photographer for a long time. Our sole income for the last 30 years for my wife and I has been photography, um, nothing else. So we're saturated in this industry in a way that most people never are or never will be. And all I want to do is see, is see the industry grow. And I just want to see people do well and create good images and not think they're creating good images. I want to see them actually create good images, you know? So it's, it's fun to be a part of that. And it's fun to just be, even if it's just a little spark or a little nudge to move things in that direction. I like, I like that. I think that's great, you know? So we have a good community for that. We have another comment from Nancy. It says, I love your comments on this. So many times I felt an image was amazing and it didn't merit. So this really gives me perspective, she says. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Well, think, think about this too, right? This, this goes for whether it's your political views or it's your popularity that you're going for or an image you create. If you create if you create something that's really good or, you, or you're really strong on a perspective, you're going to have a lot of people that like it. And then you have to have a lot of people that don't because if you're, if you're lukewarm in the middle, you're not going to make anybody happy, right? So if you create an image and, and nobody else likes it, that means there's an audience that does, right? Because it's all about polarity. 
And so for me, it's always been encouraging that if I create images and the judges, nobody likes it, but I like it. That means there's going to be somebody out there that likes it. So I'm not doing something wrong. You know, you know, I like really thin slices of cheese on my burger, but if I like them thin, there's certainly somebody that likes them thick. Right. Right. (laughs) So. Got a question, maybe I don't know if any of you would know. Um, as Labs before he died made a set of uh, I think 60 or 65 prints for Pacific Telesis at the time. I wonder what happened to that set of prints because they got merged into I don't know whoever. I think I, I saw them in the 80s or 90s at the San Diego Art Museum. Yeah, I don't, you know, that reminds me. I, I mean, they're stunning, but I mean. Who did you say made them? I Ansel Adams made a final set of prints on commission from Pacific Telephone. I think it was, I think the exhibition was maybe San Diego Art Museum and locally, maybe in the 80s, late 80s. And they were gorgeous, but I don't know what happened to them since they got bought out, whatever happened to that set of prints or who wound up with them. Yeah. I mean, they'd be, they're fantastic if you could ever see them. They're like, it's amazing what something can do without like digital photography. Yeah, Ansel Adams is a, is a very unique individual. Um, you really have to dive into, into not only um, who he was and how he created his work, but you have to dive into his darkroom. And Ansel Adams invented and created a lot of darkroom techniques that went well beyond simply dodging and burning. I mean, he created an enlarger that for his large format prints, 20 by 30s and stuff, that the whole back end that was the light source were multiple bulbs. So he could turn the lights on in different areas to create, you know, that light. I mean, he created this stuff to do what we're doing right now with HDR and with dodging and burning and stuff. So he's, he's quite amazing. He did some quite amazing stuff. Well, I mean, he was very confident. There was one picture he took and he used like a special developer to, to get super high contrast. It was taking an overcast day. If you see the picture, yeah. I think it's the Willows in Colorado. And that was taking a fully overcast day with no shadows. And it looks like right. it's taking a bright daylight. Something, something about, you know, early photographers is I think a lot of modern day photographers overlook uh, some of the techniques that they develop because, oh, well, it's, it's old school and it's, you know, it's film. But like, if you, if you look at Ansel Adams and you study the zone system, it is 100% transferable to today, 100%. Um, and if you don't understand the zone system, you should definitely make an effort to read a little bit about it. He's actually got three books called The Camera, The Negative, and The Print. And I, in one of those books, he actually talks about the zone system and how it works. But the whole, the whole idea was, was that um, the print has this much range, the negative has this much range, right? In your zones, right? So from pure black to pure white, how many steps do you have? And I can't remember how many it had. I think it was 12. That he knew I think he could it's get 10 out. zones and the outer two ones barely have the other one has almost no detail you got to get to right the yeah it was like detail. pure white and pure I mean black. I read I have the books and the goal oh. was if you don't know I mean the, the goal was was to get your entire image to fit inside the zones in like those 12 zones where our eyes can see hundreds of zones but the but the, but the but the rules still kind of apply today because digital cameras even even my Z9 that I just picked up yesterday only has so much range compared to our eyes. So we still have to look at an image and we still have to, a scene and we still have to figure out, okay, if I underexpose you and I, oh, and I, and I process it this way, I can get more tonality out of it. Well, I, of I think don't... I used to take a lot of film photography. Actually, I don't enjoy shows, but um, I think that digital cameras have more tonal range than the, film did by far but the contrast yeah. is a little bit different film had like a slow the shadows for eyes slowly there's got more contrast right. in the middle than it slopes off in the high end so it's different but i think right. overall that has more tone range yeah digital definitely does have more tone range by by a lot um the cool thing is now is that we can control that slope yeah so we can control where we want our highlights to come in where our shadows can come in we have two stops of exposure, overexposure and underexposure on a modern full frame camera. Like, 
that's amazing that, that we have to figure out a way to get into our image. And then we have to figure out a way to get it to a print because we start with all this data. Then we have to squeeze it down to a print that has, that holds this much data. And it's, it's, you know, a lot of people don't know that technique and that's where kind of the zone system and the mentality of figuring out how do we get these images and these tones to, to move, you know, to where I want them. I mean, he would adjust the development because he was taking sheet film. So he would, yep. depending on what the zone system was telling what he needed to do, he would change the exposure and change the development to control, get in that zone. It was, it was quite elaborate. So I'll show you guys a quick uh, a quick image just to kind of illustrate something. Um, this is an this is the moonrise over Hernandez by Ansel Adams, and the thing that I find so important and inspiring about this image was that as Ansel Adams' darkroom techniques, chemistry, paper improved over time, right over thirty four years, he went back and re-edited that image because the initial image. And the, and, the, and the subsequent images were not what he wanted them to be. And he couldn't make them at the time. So 41, 43, 62. Um, and there's an interview with him where he's like, it's not there yet because the technology and the print paper were not capable of getting him there. Um, and he did a lot of uh, work on the negative to get it to where uh, he could get that density in the sky. So he actually used a particular type of material to, 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 to etch the negative, to make it thinner, to grit a darker sky. Like he did a lot of stuff. But the point is for us, be inspired that the first image doesn't have to be the perfect image. And you can work your way through it and develop it over time. Just because you made it once doesn't mean that it's, that it's done. You know, you can go back and keep working that image. That second thing I was talking about, they have that picture, his last rendition of it, and it's stunning. If you ever get a chance to see that, it's in that yeah, set. The, it is yeah, absolutely stunning. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. It's 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 amazing. I can I can tell you with without hesitation that you walk into a room and if there's an Ansel Adams print hanging on the wall, you're like, what is it? That, no, no, that's that's nice, but because the the tonal range and the quality of the print is just it, people, it, God, people can't even print them today. A lot of people don't even print them that nice. That's a lot of work because he used to uh, selenium tone them. So he would have to go through the whole process, Yep. wash it, tone it, dry it before he could even see what he got. So this is like a several hour process to even see if he needs to make corrections. I know. I, know. I mean, it was, it was so time consuming. I've done it, some of that work. It's like I crazy. It, it could take you a whole day to work on a picture. And I they might too. still not get it right. Just taking some time to, to look at what previous creatives had to do with film, where our heritage is in photography can do a lot for our art today. Um, being able to understand the film process and the printing process and understanding how much work goes into an image, you know, a final image from Ansel Adams or, you know, photojournalists or anything like just, just to know that they put a lot of that work in there, I think is encouraging for us because we see social media and we see the world and we see everybody's best images. And in reality, that's not what they looked like on the negative and that's not what they look like in the back of the camera. Like they had to work them to get them there. And so just being encouraged that there's always been a process to take it from the camera to the print. There's always been a, a, a labor. There's always been that. You're not just going to go out and go, all right, that's it. That's a 90. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> Maybe Joe McNally or somebody like that could do it. But I don't think well, the I rest like that. Moon Rider, he probably worked on that through his whole career. Maybe a full month working on that yeah. one picture through his yeah. whole career. Yep. Literally. Yep, exactly. Exactly. But that's the joy, right? Good, you guys. Um, I'm going to hit end on the recording right now. Thank you, Troy, for such a great critique. We really, really Yay. appreciate it.